All right, family. All right, all right. What's good to the family out there? Let y'all know. Uh, let me know if y'all could hear me. Let me know if y'all can hear me before we get started with today's very important show. Let me know if y'all can hear me. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Yeah, the eclipse came. It happened. The big day happened, y'all. The big day came and went and went down. And I'm curious to know. I'm talking to the family today. I'm curious to hear about some experiences. Uh, you know, what happened. You know, if you were scared, let me know. If you wasn't scared, let me know. Rain all day here. Somebody saying it was rain all day. But yeah, this was a bet spiritually. A lot of people talked about it. A lot of ancient coaches talked about it. Woo, somebody said I just ended a five-year marriage. Damn. What on a date? What on not not that not um what on the um 3k on the day of the eclipse you ended a five-year marriage? I'm just curious. And you should call in today. You should call in. Because today I'm talking to y'all. Let me put this, let me put this link in here. I'm talking to y'all, right? Because people have had uh, uh, experiences all around. Well, I'm going to tell you about mine personally. I'm going to tell you about mine, but I want to hear about yours. yours, And um, I think we can learn from each other's experiences. Instead of just having one person talk for an hour, I want the family to tell me what the hell going, what the hell went down with y'all. It's like the news. Today, I'm like a news reporter. I'm like, yes. And what did you experience yesterday on 4-8-2024? Please tell me. And you're like, yo, yesterday, that shit was lit. Da, 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 da. So I'm interested to hear what y'all got to say about what went down yesterday. I definitely want to know. Somebody said, I felt amazing yesterday. That's good. That's good. Well, since you said that, let me start out like this. In terms of um, my personal, and so much is going on. We're, we're going to, oh, let me just tell y'all this also. Later on, uh, shout out to Khadijah, Panic's wife. I just got my book in the mail, The Seven Laws of Dark Power, Volume 2, Self Master by Brother Panic. Shout out to the spirit, the soul of Brother Panic, who lives on forever. See you forever, my brother. His soul lives on forever. Um, yeah, just I didn't even know he had this book out. And the other day in my live chat, y'all was like, yeah, the book is out. So I was like, oh, shit. I went to a cult lectures. I hollered at Khadijah. I told her I ordered. Um, I ordered two to show support. So I got two books here. What I'm going to do, one is for me, and I'm going to be doing a giveaway later on. When we hit a, when we, when we hit a thousand people in the chat, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. I got a question I'm going to ask y'all. And you know how I do with the questions. So I'm going to ask y'all a question. And whoever's the first one in the chat to answer will get a free book from brother from myself by Brother Panic. I'm going to be doing a giveaway. And I advise all y'all to get this book. I started reading it so far, not from beginning to end, but I'm like going through certain chapters and stuff like that. I'm like, yo, this shit is powerful. You can get this book at occultlectures.com. You can get this book at occult, occultlectures.com. And um, this is Brother Panic's last book. Shout out to that brother, amazing brother with the occult studies. Uh, I would love to have heard that brother's opinion on the eclipse. You know what I'm saying? You know, Panic, yo, son. Yo, these niggas make everything a special event, son. The blue moon, the red moon, the orange moon, the pussy moon. <laughs> you know, panic is, son, it's all inside you, son. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shout out to my brother, Panic. That was my brother, Panic, man. You know you know how he get down. But we're going to be doing that probably in about, um, shit, probably in about a half an hour or something like that. We'll, we'll be doing that. But, uh, man, yeah, in terms of the eclipse, man, we had the light and we had the dark. We had the sun. We had the moon. You know, people were thinking about the feminine, the masculine. And, uh, and also, y'all had some sisters hit me up after uh, Dr. Phil Valentine was on here. Some of y'all got mad. So I would be interested in talking to a couple of y'all, too, about, um, you know, this things going on between a black man and black woman or just a man and a woman right now. All races are experiencing turbulence, for lack of better words, between each other. So we could talk about that, too. We could talk about a lot of things tonight. Um, 
It's going to be one of them. I haven't done a live Q&A with just y'all in a while. So it, it feels good. It's just been me. Um, I did a couple of them last year. Then I just started doing with the speakers. But uh, somebody said, man, about what were some of the things the brother said? Some of the things he said, uh, a couple of sisters emailed me and I seen the comments I was upset about. And it's not necessarily about Doc. Um, it's necessarily, it's more so about um, how can we get to the bottom of what we see happening, you know, online. All you got to do is go go to any comment section where there's a relationship video. Go to any comment section where there's a relationship video, whether it's Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, whatever. So, you know, it's whatever. But, but like I said, that's just an aspect of the conversation. But let me let me start out like this. So let me tell you my story about the eclipse. So I respect everybody's opinion. You, you've seen I brought several people up here to talk about the eclipse. Aquarius Maximus was up here. Bedell was up here. Dr. Phil Valentine was up here. Uh, Red Blue Pill talked about it. We I went live at the um at the spot with Blue Pill. He talked about it. You know, everybody has their perspective. One thing I want to say. And I want to remind y'all about is that, and and panic and all the cult teachers will tell you this, there's no such thing as reality, number one. All we're experiencing is our own personal interpretation of, of this infinite sea of information. Let me say this again. There's no such thing as reality. We are experiencing our personal interpretation of this infinite sea of information, all right? The divine light, you could call uh, this infinite sea, or you, you could, it could go by many names, but we are personally interpreting information or pers per personally interpreting infinity. And you can have any experience you want in this realm, pretty much. Um, and depending on who you ask, depending upon what you agreed upon, maybe you agreed upon to experience, some, experience something so some people say you have destiny. You, I mean, you have free will before you get here. But by the time you get here, then you have, uh, it's your destiny to experience a certain thing. But at some point in your soul, whether you're in the body or not, you decided to have a certain experience. You decide to have a personal interpretation, whether it's before you came in this body or where you, while you're in the body. That's up for debate. You know, but um, based on that, it's hard to give advice. I had a lot of people ask me about, should I look at the um, eclipse? Should I should I not look at it? And I'm like, it just depends on your level of soul evolution. It depends on your level of spiritual evolution. What may work for somebody may not work for somebody else. You know, I wouldn't advise some people to look at the eclipse. Some people, I'd be like, yeah, you good. Go ahead, look at the eclipse, you know. And I respect everybody's take on it. And I think that's the main thing. Oh, thank you. Thank you, baby. My, my wonderful woman just bought me something. Thank you. Um, put that up there. You got to respect everybody's take on spirituality, on life, on whatever. Because, like I said, what works for somebody else may not work for me, and vice versa. So we have to keep that in mind and not criticize somebody for the decision they make with an event. Should have bought some water. With an event like the what like the um eclipse. One thing I don't like. I do feel like there was a lot of fear mongering going on. I do feel like that. And um, but I understand, but I do feel like there was a lot of fear mongering going on. I went out the day of the eclipse, so I went out by myself. Uh, I had to pick up I had to get some honey from KT. I got that, and then I had to um I decided just to stick around and see what's going on with the eclipse. So I was like. I went, to, I went to Whole Foods after that, and I was in the parking lot, just posted up, seeing what's going on. I thought I was supposed to see something. I ain't see nothing. I was upset. I called Blue Pill like, man, what the fuck going on, man? I don't see nothing. But um, Blue Pill was like, it ain't going to be in this part of Georgia. But the app I had was like, yo, there was going to be like a partial 80% eclipse. So I'm looking for like a partial 80% or something. Man, I, ain't, I, I seen like a little bit. It got a little dark, but I appreciate it. But um. You just got to remember, family, when the fear mongering goes on, you have to remember that that may be what that person needs to do. And sometimes what we need to do, we tell the world to do the same thing so we can feel comfortable doing it. 
So if I'm scared of monkeys or if I'm scared of lions, I may create a YouTube channel about how monkeys and lions are dangerous to get the world to be scared of monkeys and lions so that I won't feel guilty or I won't feel bad or I won't feel stupid about being scared of monkeys or lions. So when every anybody says something, you have to understand that you have to take everything with a grain of salt and understand that yeah, the project projection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every everybody, a lot of people, a lot, there's a lot of projection going on, a lot of projecting going on, a lot of projecting going on, a lot. That's an important word that wasn't taught to us when we were young. And if we were taught the art of projecting, we will understand life a lot more. Because a lot of people when I was young was projecting fears on me, and I didn't know how to interpret it. A lot of people were projecting jealousy on me, projecting insecurities on me, but we people disguise it. Humanity, we disguise it in a fancy way. So a person will be like, they they may, they may, um, they they may be jealous of you and, and they project their insecurities on you because of their jealousy. And we haven't been taught to interpret that that way. We just look at it as, you know, words as face value, but it's really not. You know what I'm saying? Um, person could tell you, yo, that, yo, that, that coat is whack. You'd be like, yo, how does coat look? How does shirt look? Yo, how does shirt look? How does shirt look, my nigga? Like, yeah, that shit is whack, bro. That shit is whack. He lying his ass. So if it ain't whack, he wish he had it. He's it's jealousy and he's projecting his insecurities at you or whatever. And there's, I'm sure there's way better examples, but that's uh the only one. I thought of now, but yeah, um, perception is personal. So with the clips, one thing I, I experienced, I'm gonna tell you, I experienced a lot. I was I was kind of anxious yesterday, and um, another thing we haven't been taught. Sometimes when we're anxious, like I was anxious, like if you ask somebody, how was the clips? They'd be like, oh my god, it was beautiful. I laid in the grass and the sun covered me, and I felt my yacht, the wing of my yacht touch my body, and I was resurrected into a new being. And that's beautiful if they experience that. That's great if they're telling the truth, because we we lie a lot too. That's another thing we do in this world. We lie a lot. We let we lie to ourselves a whole lot. But um, to be honest with y'all, I felt a lot of I felt anxious yesterday. And I thought to myself, by the end of the day, I was like, damn, why I feel a little anxious? And I said to myself, I thought about something Aquarius Maximus said when she came on the show. She was like, yo, just chill. She was like, don't try to, I, you know, she was like, if I was to give advice and basically to sum it up, she was like, yo, just chill. Don't try to do too much. Just relax. Sometimes doing nothing is doing something, for lack of better words. Sometimes you ain't got to do the ultimate ritual the ultimate this so during the eclipse day i'm thinking damn i was like should i upload a meditation video should i do a show i was gonna upload a, vi a, a lyric video for me and can i done thought about seven different things to do on social media the day of the eclipse came i ain't do shit i ain't, i ain't upload nothing on instagram youtube i ain't do no video i ain't upload my meditation song the meditation song is like 80 percent done i didn't even feel like doing the rest of it i ain't uploaded it um thought about doing a video that night Thought about uploading a song for me and the album, the album me and Cam ain't do that either. Ain't do none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? I just, cause I felt a little anxious and I had to realize that an analogy to compare ourselves to is, you know, we, we could be like a holographic television. Like if you talk to Bruce Lipton, he'll say, yo, your body's like the television, but the broadcast, like let's say you watching um the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is not inside your television. It's being broadcast in the television, but the Super Bowl is outside. It's a broadcast. So I had to keep that in mind in terms of if I'm using myself as a computer, like if I'm a computer and the information is not in the computer, information is being projected, streamed, or downloaded into the computer. If your computer is getting a, a, a big upload, a big download, you can't open up too many windows. You can't, the computer can't do too much thinking. If you're trying to download an 100 gigabyte file, your computer can't do too much thinking. How does your computer do too much thinking? You're on the internet and you got 10 tabs open at a time. It's going to slow down the download. It's going to slow down the windows. The computer ain't going to operate as fast. You're going to be like, damn, why is it op operating so slow? Because you're getting this huge download and you're trying to do too much. So if the computer could talk and you'd be like, and you, and you can ask the computer while it's downloading a hundred gigabytes, the comp computer might not say, well, I'm, I'm feeling a magnificent. The computer might say, yo, I'm feeling 
something's coming in me. I'm feeling a little whatever. You know, the computer might be like, yo, I don't know. Something's happening. I just feel like, I, you know, and, and in human terms, that can be interpreted as anxious. But really, it's just a, a, a heavy, a heavy download. So um, just like with the computer, you just let the computer rest. When it's time to make a big download, it says close all your windows. Plug the plug in. Like this plug right here. It says make sure you're plugged into an outlet. So the way we plug in is by grounding, right? So if we got to plug this to the computer for a heavy download, we should have grounded it and just chill. Not saying we or everybody should have done that, but that's what I had to do necessarily for me personally, me personally. So I did ground. I did ground that day. Yesterday I did ground. And um, today I'm going to tell you today what's interesting. So today, yesterday I felt anxious today, today. I felt like I made every today. I would say today felt perfect for me. Like I made every right decision. Like I, I made every single right decision I needed to make today. So it was like complete opposite of yesterday. Like yesterday I was just a little like a little anxious, like a little jittery. And today I was just chilling. I made every right decision today. Like everything I did was right today. Everything. There was like a plan to do, uh, uh, you know, me and my girl had a certain plan. I like canceled. I was like, no, 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 let's not do that. Let's do this because I'm just following my intuition. And when I said that, that turned out to be the right thing to do. Everything worked out fine. From more from the time I got up, this 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 there's somebody I needed to talk to today. I talked to that person, a phone number that I needed to get today, got that phone number. Uh, um, 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 everything just turned out perfect today. So I'm just saying to myself, wow, after that, after how I felt yesterday, it feels good to just have a perfect day today perfect day today. So I'm just um, thankful for my experience. We all can learn from each other's experiences. And that's what we're going to do. Um, that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to talk to some of y'all. We are all going to learn from each other's experiences. If you just come in the chat, I got, I just got brother panic's book. I'm going to, I got two of them actually. Shout out to Khadija's wife. Um, his books is available at coatlectures.com. Make sure y'all get it. Uh, I'm going to be giving one away today. I'm going to be giving one away. I should give it away now. We got 1,500 people in the chat. I should be, I should give. I should do a giveaway now before I start the Q and A. Um, but uh, yeah. Besides that, yeah, I just wanted to tell you that, like, don't don't be so quick to when you have a certain emotion. Don't be so fast, family. If there's one thing I learned from the eclipse, from the experience, let's not be so fast to define everything. We want to define something as soon as we experience this. Oh, this, this is that or that's that. Sometimes just let that feeling pass without defining it because our definition of it may change what the intention of it was for. You know, like say you lost your job, right? The intention of you losing your job is because you was praying for a whole year to make more money, to be a millionaire. So then you finally lose your job. Your interpretation of losing the job is something bad. But it's really meant because you don't have the bird's eye view, you don't know that that was something great that happened to you. So there's great things happening to us all the time, but we're redefining it. We're reinterpreting it and we're turning the car the other way because the conscious mind is the captain of the ship. So you're telling the subconscious mind to do something. So the subconscious, you like, you telling the subconscious mind, go left, right? The subconscious mind goes left. Then you go left, you can't see no more. It's cloudy, right? Say it's cloudy. You can't see. Then you're like, no, 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 no. Go right, go right, go right, go right. But if you would have stayed left, like you originally told your subconscious mind, there was an island there with water, gold, fruits, berries, all that shit. You know what I'm saying? It was heaven there waiting you. But you got so scared because you couldn't see what was 100 feet ahead of you. You could only see 10 feet ahead of you. So you got scared. So you turned. The, you told the subconscious mind to turn the ship around. The subconscious is going to listen to whatever we say it. And the blessings be right there, ready to embrace us. We get scared because we can't see it. And then we tell the subconscious to turn the other way. So don't get scared if you can't interpret an emotion. Know that the universe is always conspiring in your favor, whether you know it or not. The universe is always conspiring in your favor. Even if that favor is something that you would think is to harm you, there's a lesson in what just happened to you. There's a lesson in what you perceive as harm. There's a lesson in that. 
Our job is to interpret everything as a lesson learned from them and keep it moving. But if we interpret life from a perspective of the universe is always conspiring in our favor, we will have completely different results. So next time you feel anxiety, don't label it. It's the labels. It's the like. It's the language lockdown. We're labeling all these things. We're defining things that don't need defining. <clears throat> so let's just be aware of that. Um, you know, moving forward and understand when a speaker comes on my channel. Like I said, there's so many different perspectives of speakers that come on here and say different things. No, I do not agree with everybody. It would be impossible for me to agree with everybody because everybody, everybody's saying something a little different. We're all generally saying the same thing, but everybody's saying we're going about it in a different way. So I don't agree with everybody's direction to, to, to get to where we want to get. But I understand that because we're all different and because life is our personal interpretation of this infinite sea of information, everybody needs something different to get to where they got to get. So I may have somebody that I may, that I may not agree with 100%, but y'all benefit from it. A thousand percent. And y'all like, yeah, he's the greatest. Oh my God. I love what he did. And I'm like, great jobs accomplished. Jobs done. I learned from different perspectives. That's what God does. God learns from different perspectives. God incarnates as all of us to learn from different perspectives about who God is. So God uh, 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 uses us. The hologram of us, because we are not separate from God to understand who it is. And we each have a unique story to tell. So I appreciate every speaker who comes on this channel. Uh, everybody, a lot of people had different perspectives on the clips. You have to just keep in mind, family, moving forward in terms of your spiritual evolution, advice. Uh, when when somebody gives advice, you have to you have to decide where you're at in your spiritual evolution, <clears throat> and whether that resonates with you or not. It doesn't mean it's wrong. It doesn't mean after the speaker comes on here, it says something you agree with. You make a video shitting on him or talk about him on social media like, yo, he just said this and that's crazy. No, that's his personal interpretation of the infinity of information that we call the universe. We call the quantum field. We could call it the divine, this divine feminine energy. We could call this many names. We call it big mom. We call it a lot. We call it God. You know, there's different names for it, but. We all have the ability to tap into this infinity of information and um, experience our own our own illusion because this is all an illusion. We could all experience our own illusion. So just keep that in mind. Let's not be judgmental of what other people do. Some people did not want to see the eclipse. Some people did want to see the eclipse. I wanted to see the eclipse. I wanted to see it. I wanted to see it. I went out. I wanted to see it. But um. I, I, I thought I was going to see more than I saw. I seen a little bit of it, but like I said, I just, I just thought I, I was going to see. Uh, let me see what somebody put it. Thank you, Crystal, for the super chat. Uh, Crystal Quartz. Shout out to Qu Crystal Quartz. Uh, so Crystal Quartz said, I'm curious to know which speaker you feel you again the most. I, I think you mean I, which speaker I gained the most. Is that what you mean, Crystal? I, I don't, you know, what does you feel you again the most? I think you mean you gain the most. Clarify for that. Clarify, clarify that for me in the chat, Crystal. I don't want to misinterpret what you're saying. But we're gonna um we we're gonna do a little Q and A tonight. Not Q and A, but I'm gonna talk to the family tonight about the eclipse and what went down, what happened, how did you feel? Um. Yeah, like I said, man, I, I hope y'all listen to what I said, man. And it, and, it, and it was dope. Or oh, agree with the most, yeah. Um, Crystal said, I'm curious to know which speaker you feel you agree with the most. Uh, I'm more along the lines of a... Uh, I'm personally more along the lines of a uh, Dr. B. Serious. Um... Minister Jew type, uh, I, I'm, you know, in my, in my twenties, in my twenties, I was heavy into Neville Goddard and Reverend Ike and, um, they changed my life, Esther Hicks and, uh, they changed my life, Bashar and Minister Jew got that Neville, he, 
He he teaches the teachings of Neville Goddard. And I understand the importance of that. I understand that everything is important, but I understand in order to take your power back, in order to be that leader that we talk about. You know, we there was a debate when Dr. Phil was on here about whether the man is the leader or the woman is the leader. And if you ultimately want to be the leader, not only in your household, but in your life, you got to take full responsibility. So in order to take full responsibility, people will say that, but it's a hard task to do because as soon as something happens to them, they're pointing fingers at men, at women, at the white man, at this, at that. And I understand that that person is a representative of something bad that may be happening to you, but just because they're representative doesn't mean they're the cause. You're the cause, but they're just the circumstance. You cause that circumstance. Ultimately, everything is energy. We ultimately, we've been taught that our eyes see, but like um, Sharif was on here the other day and he was saying that your eyes project. If I need to, like my son is five right now, right? My son thinks, I see, I see, I see this. I see that, I see this. We've been taught since we was young. Oh, I, mean, I see the world. What if when a kid is five, we teach them, hey, little Billy or little whoever, you project the world. You, that's your projection. Your eyes are like, and we show them a movie projection lens. And we show them how the movie, the projection lens beams to the, to, to the silver screen. And we're like, this is what your eyes do, Billy, little Billy. And, and you know, so, um, and, I, and that's what it takes to ultimately be a leader is to um, accountability. And to um, accept your reality the way it is, not take it personal, regardless of what happens, and to understand that we all have had bad things happen to us and understand that there's a divine purpose to it and that we ultimately have the power to change it. So the speakers that resonate, that, 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 that speaks on that resonant field the most, I gravitate towards. So I would say, Dr. B. Serious. Um, you know, uh, you know, Minister Jew. Um, in terms of the sisters out there, you know, Erin Lyons, she's she Erin Lyons, she's tapped in totally. So I, I said before she she reminds me of um Esther of Esther Hicks. Uh Abraham. Is that her name? Esther Hicks? Am I saying her name right? Uh I think I'm saying Esther. Yeah. Yeah, she reminds me of um Esther Hicks, the you know, the way she's tapped in. But the people who take full responsibility um for everything in their life. I tend to um I tend to gravitate toward the most. Uh I love the I love all the speakers, you know, that come on here. Obviously, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't I appreciate their work. I wouldn't have them on there, but I'm personally not into allowing a planet or anything of that nature to dictate how, <clears throat> who I am or how I feel. <clears throat> I personally feel like I'm one of the older entities on the planet. And um, I existed before the sun, moon, and the stars. So I appreciate the sun, the moon, and the stars and the planets. But I feel as though where the realm I come from, you know, it's pre all of that. So this is where earlier when I talked about getting advice and knowing your level of spiritual evolution, there's things I can do that y'all could never do. And there's things I can't do that y'all could do all the time. Let me say that again. There's things that I can do Personally, that y'all could no, but none of y'all could never do. But at that same time, there's things that I can't do that y'all can do. And that's how this shit works. So I understand my level of spiritual evolution. And I would say the most, the most advanced person is the person who's honest with themselves in their spiritual journey. So the person who's who knows who, where they are in their spiritual journey and say, I can't look at the eclipse. That person is more advanced than a person who lies to themselves. And says they can look and tells the world, look at that. You got to embrace your power. Secretly, they're scared and they don't know what's going to happen. And there's fear inside them. But they just wanted to project a bravado or they want to project a strength that they internally didn't have. The person who's honest with themselves. And that's the weighing of the heart. Your heart knows when you're lying or when you're not. Your heart knows that. Thoughts are chemistry. Drew Pukum just came on here and said our thoughts are chemistry. So that chemistry gets secreted in your body. You can say, I love black people. But when you say that, a thought, I mean, a chemistry is secreted throughout your whole body. And you may be able to trick 
the so-called external world, but inside your body knows what's happening. And this is when disease happens. The person is like, how did they come down with that? They look so happy. The person might have been miserable, but that person might have been fronting. That person might have been fronting, but that chemistry ain't fronting. That thought produced that chemistry throughout your whole body. That shit ain't fronting. That shit ain't fronting at all. So, yeah, with that being said, let me let me do a giveaway real quick before I'm, I'm going to get to the Q&A. Let me put the um link in the chat. How many? Oh, uh, half an hour went by. Let me put the link in the chat once again if you want to come on the show. And, um, and, uh, yeah, somebody said Sharif L's presentation was unique. I got a lot from that. It was Divine. Yes, it was Divine Timing. Glad the brother got an opportunity to come on here. Um, I peeped the brother last year and I was like, last year, I was like, I got to get the brother on the show. And then a video of his just popped up on my screen, uh, last week. And I was like, it's time. I got to call this brother. I got so much in my mind, I be forgetting to reach out to certain people. You know, this it takes a lot to do what I do in terms of you know this channel and the co information. The one of the things I I embrace, like I love the fact that I don't know who said to do affirmations. Somebody was talking about affirmations. Oh, Phil, Doctor Valentine was like the importance of affirmation during the eclipse. Um, affirmations is cool when you're reading it from a book. But when you start to say hood affirmations or ghetto affirmations or, you know, modern affirmations, people think you're being arrogant, but it's affirmations. We just we're just saying it. We live in we're in so-called 2024. So we're not going to say the traditional affirmations. The just traditional affirmations may have no power in this day and time. They were just an example. So you, you might have to update your affirmation or your self-talk. But um. In terms of my affirmations, one of the things I'm, I was grateful for with the eclipse that I, I gave I gave thanks for was that I've been doing this since 2000 and I think six I started 2005 or 2006. I'm not mad old and about to die or nothing like that. And of course, there's no such thing as death, but y'all get the point I'm trying to make. I've been doing it since I was young. I think I started. Um, Watching Booker T. Coleman was my first tape when I was like 18, 19. And I just been into this information since young. I started my first interview was in 2006 or 2000. I mean, my first interview with Arlene Bay was in 2006, I think, or seven. It was on this law of attraction. It was on the secret, the law of attraction. I think it might have been 2007. It was on the secret law of attraction. And we're in 2024. I've been doing it for a long time. A lot of people that's into this information that you see on the internet, teaching or interviewing or whatever, not are not around no more from that era. A lot of people don't last five years. I've been around since two thousand and six, y'all. And y'all see, y'all see how young I look. I've been around since two thousand and six, interviewing people. People telling me how amazing my interviews with Dr. Blair. We did the Return of the Black Cosmic Forces, classic. Everybody done put it on the internet on YouTube. And I'm around, and the beautiful thing is that, and I see my brother Huna, Huna Flash, my ninja. He be like my ninja. Huna Flash be like my ninja. He in the back. I'm gonna put uh, my ninja Huna Flash. But listen, I've been around since 2006, and the beautiful thing, and I and I and I and I gave a big thanks to this yesterday. I'm in my motherfucking prime right now. I'm in my prime. I'm in my prime now. I just told you, some people don't last four or five years. I'm in my prime right now, and I've been into this information. And I've been doing this shit a long time. A line Jay-Z said was, nobody's been this hot for this long. I've been hot a long time, y'all. I've been doing my thing a long time. I've been that nigga, for lack of better words, a long time with this interviewing thing. And I'm in my prime right now. I got to give thanks for that. I got longevity. I'm like, I'm like LeBron with this shit. LeBron is in his, what, uh, 20th year, some shit like that? Still play, still dunking? I got to give, I'm thankful for that. Thank you. Thank you. My higher self, ancestors, my mama, my daddy, everybody. I'm thankful. I'm in my prime right now. I'm great at this shit. So I'm thankful for that. 
Let's do a quick giveaway before we get to the questions. Real quick, family. Um, uh, what was the name since I talked about being in since I talked about being in this game for so long, right? A lot of people know I had a blog talk show, and I just ended it. I didn't want to do it anymore. I had a blog talk show. I think I did it for about a year or two years, then I just stopped. I didn't want to do it no more. What was the name of the show I did? I had a I had a show with Bobby and Bobby Hemming and Brother Panic. They didn't do many things together, talk at the same time. I did that. I did that. I did that. I was like 25 when I did that or something like that. I did that. I brought both of them together and we, we did the show. What was the name of the show? I know y'all no, not the name of the show. What was the name of the show that I did with Brother Panic? Not not my my um my blog talk, the name of my blog talk was Underground Railroad Radio. But what was the name of the show specifically with Brother Panic and Bobby Hemmett? What was the name of that show? Brother Panic and Bobby Hemmett. Yeah, got huh? Oh, you know what? You know what? I'm gonna give it to Lance. Lance, I'm gonna give it to you. You ain't say the whole name, but you know what's up. Where Lance said, hold up. And his chest start moving so fast. Um, hold up, y'all. Let me pay y'all what up. Give me hold up, y'all. All right, yeah, Michael Jackson. I'm just, I'm Lance got it. It was the Archangel, the name of the show was the Arch Archangel Michael Jackson. That was around the time Michael Jackson made the transition. Lance, do me a favor, my brother. You get the book from Brother Panic. I'm gonna mail this out to you. I just told y'all. Go to occultlectures.com. He got a new book. It's absolutely powerful. We all need to get it. I got one for myself, and I ordered another one because I want to do a giveaway. Um, support the Brother Panic. One thing we also we got to do, we have to support when the brothers make, brother, when we all make the transition to the other realm, we leave behind families, right? We leave behind families. Like, let's say I made a transition tonight. Y'all know I got a lady and I got a son. So if I got work that's out there, support the work. You know, um, if I got a book that's out there, just buy a book. Just, you know, if I got herbs, like a brother, if a brother got herbs, like Dr. You know, Dr. Africa got herbs out there or uh, or, or uh, whoever, Dr. Sabi may have herbs out there. You know, just, you know, support the work that's out there. And that's another way that you show love. So, um, you know, my, my, my brother Panic. His wife, Khadija, is holding it down, doing a magnificent job with the books, shipping them out super fast. Make sure you go to occultlectures.com. But Lance, saying that to say, Lance, uh, email me, Lance. Lance, email me at, let me put my email, Merritt at yahoo.com. Uh, Lance, email me. Lance, Lance got that question fast. Uh, when we doing an emergency broadcast for Rashad Jamal, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that situation. Um, it's a real touchy subject when it comes to the, the whole domestic thing. Cause you don't really know what's going on in the household. Uh, that's a conversation for another time. I, I only talked to the brother one time on the phone, but um, the brother, it was, he's a great brother from what I know. When, when I talked to him on the phone that time before we did the show, it's real tricky with that shit, man. Cause you got polite, you got Rashad, you got nature boy and these accusations that are being brought up against these brothers. Even the situation recently with Rod Hayes, right? A sister came out and said, Rod Hayes did some shit, right? You don't really know what's going on in somebody's home. You could use your own discretion, but as a responsible media outlet, I can't just jump out the window. I don't know what the hell's happening. There was one time I thought the shit people were saying about polite was false. And, you know, you just don't know. I know what goes on in my household. I'm not going to come on here and broadcast every argument me and my girl has. So each household has their own situation and we really don't know what's going on in that household. So we got to be responsible when it comes to the shit, defending somebody about what's going on in their personal household. 
Uh, cause it, it gets real tricky. It gets real tricky. So he tried to find out. I remember when the, when people first started talking about polite, right? I'm sitting back when they when they were just talking about the scammer thing. I didn't know whether it was true or not, but I'm just sitting back gathering data, gathering data, gathering data. One day I had enough data. One day I had enough data on polite. I said, you know what? I said, I got to distance myself from the brother. And that's when I did the video with Red and Blue. We did that video, myself, Red and Blue in Brooklyn. And I made the conscious decision to take the brother's videos off my channel and to not interview the brother no more. But it takes time with that shit, bro. It's some serious shit, man, because you don't really know what's going down. And I'm glad you asked that because I think we all, as a media personality, it's two different positions in life. As a fan or as a supporter of somebody, you just want the media outlet to support that person. But as a media outlet, you have to be a little more, you have to show a little more responsibility when it comes to just jumping out the window and supporting or whatever. You don't have the data, like the data. Like with the Rod Hayes situation, I got some data. That's my brother. I got some data. I support my brother Rod Hayes. I support my brother Rod Hayes. I got some data and I support my brother Rod Hayes. Polite, I got data and I decided I did not want to go that direction. So it's about the data, gathering the data and making a decision after that. But I just got to move slow with situations with individuals being accused of certain things because I don't know. I don't fall for women's tears and I don't fall for shit these, these, these dudes out here saying about how the the because the, the woman will cry and the dude is going to say the government is after them. And that's why they being trying to take down. So I just got to use my intuition, which is on point. It's on a thousand. My intuition is incredible. And I have to use my analytical ability, which I have because I'm a Virgo. And I got to make a conscious decision. So I just take time with situations like that. I appreciate the video I did with the brother Rashad Jamal. It was a great video. I talked to the brother once, probably, I think twice before that video. And he appeared to be a great brother, but I, I absolutely, I actually knew Polite. It was hard for me to do what I did with Polite. I knew the dude. Polite has helped me. You know, when you have an emotional connection with somebody, it's harder to disassociate yourself with them. Polite has personally called me and helped my woman, my girl, my lady with health things. Tell her what she could do. Help me with health things. Tell me what I could do. I've got direct help from the brother about things to eat, supplement things to take, whatever, whatever. So that decision I had to make was like, oh, man, I don't want to do this, brother. Brother, you just helped me this, so you just helped me with that. But I had to do what I had to do once I got the data. So I just, you know, I'm not, I don't rush. I don't jump the gun. It's like sometime with whole Jay-Z, this somebody, it may, somebody this Jay-Z may take him three years to respond or a year or whatever. I'm not, nobody's going to rush me. To make a judgment. Nobody's going to rush me to make a decision. I make all the decisions I make in my life. Like we were talking the other day about um, Phil with Phil. And he was talking about men are the leaders. And the women was like, y'all niggas can't lead. Women are leaders. In my home, I'm the captain and the chief. <laughs> That's what Cab said. And he was talking about that was, you know, he was talking Pat Mahomes because he played for the Chiefs. So that was like, you know, a clever way of saying that. But point is saying that I'm a leader leader. So I'm not just making a rush decision and I'm doing what I got to do. But shout out to, um, I appreciate what anybody contributed to uh, my platform. I appreciate um, what Polite contributed to this platform. I hope the brother gets the help, the help he needs. I don't know what percentage of the accusations is right. I made a decision, but we all need help in some way, form or fashion. And I feel like we're all learning from the age of Pisces and everything we went through. Uh, and hopefully we could all uh, reach the next level of spiritual evolution. You know what I'm saying? But uh, shout to everybody who has contributed something. For that, I'm appreciative and I thank y'all. And if the, their soul is being judged, whether whoever it is, whether it's Rashad more Polite, whoever, I don't know exactly what's going on. Like I said, I'm not in that house. But I will say that um, I'm thankful if their soul is being judged at the end scene with a feather, I mean, with a, with a heart and a feather, whatever that end scene is, I'm thankful for the good they contributed to my platform. That's all I could talk about. 
is the good those gentlemen contributed to my platform. Anything else that they did, they have to deal with that. Anything the sisters did that came on this platform, they have to deal with that. But what I can say is I am thankful. I want to tell the universe I'm thankful for any individuals that came on this platform and contributed to the elevation of humanity and the elevation of consciousness in the times that we are in. We all have good and bad within us. And I pray that we all allow to good to over overpower, um, you know, the, and I don't want to say good and bad, just the, the lower vibrations that may seek dominance in our bodies, you know, the temptations that we may have. I want to tell my brothers out there, being a leader is all about not succumbing to temptations. You know what I'm saying? Don't sacrifice your home, you know, for a quick, you know, whatever, whatever. When Yaki coming back on the show, Yaki going to be back soon. We got something big coming up. We got something big coming up. Yeah, I don't know what's going on in the chat. I'm I'm a, I'm about to go in the chat. I'm a I'm gonna throw niggas out like crazy, but I haven't I haven't even looked at the chat. I'm just I'm happy to kick it with y'all. But listen, let's get to the um, let's get to the uh, let's get to um, let's get to uh, the people in the back. My brother Sharif said, Sharif, you say you in the you in the live chat? I don't see you. Oh no, Sh Sh Sharif said, oh, I think you in the chat. Okay, okay. Shout out to Sharif Bay. Shout out my brother Sharif J. Sharif Bay came on and dropped an amazing, amazing show. I right, Lance, you just email me good. I'm gonna ship that book out to you definitely by Monday. I'm gonna try to ship it out before. Shout out to Lance, the winner of the book, Brother Panic. If you would like to get it, amazing book, go to coatlectures.com. Lance won. I did a little giveaway today. I bought two from the website. Shout out to Khadija, Panic's wife, and I'm giving one away to the family. Um, Lance, I'm gonna ship it out to you by Monday. All right, my brother. Let's um, let me, let me get my brother Huna on. Huna Flash, I can't hear you. No, no, can't hear you. Let me see. What's right. up? Hey, 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 what's happening, brother? What's cracking, my ninja? I'm, I'm chilling, man. I'm chilling. Yo, Huna, when, when are you going away again? Because I got to get you on for your own separate. When are you going away? April 22nd, I get on the road for a month. Okay. Uh, big missions ahead, brother, supporting the energies post-eclipse. Oh, yeah. So let's let's get to it, brother. Let's get to it, brother. Um, I'm getting uh, reactions from the family in the chat today. What are your thoughts on the eclipse? What happened? What's going to take place after Eclipse? What did you do? Did you look at it? Did you not look at it? I, I would love to hear what you got to say, brother. Talk to me, brother. Brother, I'm trained in the dragon eye. I can look at anything, brother. Yeah, you said that. You did say that. You said that. Okay, good. Now, if you all want to learn what the dragon eye is, you got to come and visit, or we got to hang out and teach you the discipline, okay? It's a discipline. And I'll say this. That discipline... Will even even challenges the Lama and the uh, the the uh, Shaolin priests. Okay, so this is not a discipline to to just mess around with. You have to get the practice. So that's the Dragon Eye. Okay, right. indeed. Now that's not just gazing at the sun or gazing at these energies. This is balls wide open, brother. Eyeballs wide open. Not squinting, okay? No squinting allowed. No water out of your eyes is allowed. That's 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 not the discipline. The discipline is without weeping. God damn, and, brother. Uh, you, you tough on us. <laughs> staring at the, that energy, that sun at the highest point of the day, what, what makes it easier, because I know you're going to have to look straight up, is you, you lay down in the water and you float and you look straight up, okay? That's easier. If you're suspended, it's more comfortable for you. <laughs> and I want you to be comfortable in the feeling where it's normally uncomfortable. I want you to learn how to be meditating in the uncomfortability so you become comfortable and at peace. You understand? Indeed. Indeed. Okay. I mean now, yeah, I do that all the time. I've been doing that since I'm young. But I was... At the morning of the eclipse, I was at the driving range on, on the golf course 
practicing my my swing. <laughs> I was in the nature in the jungle where we have a beautiful golf course. I was just being in the nature, being in the in the health and the wellness and enjoying myself during mm. that mm. part of the day. And the second part of that day, I was in the water in the Caribbean Sea, enjoying exactly that, on, on floating around on my back, looking straight up at the sun, straight up at the energies. Uh, I believe it was 202 in Mexico time because sweet, sweet, dear ones, I live in Mexico, okay? And so I was enjoying all that heat in the Caribbean Sea in the water, and I was embraced by that feeling that the water gives you, uh, embracing and just floating in that, suspended in it, brother, suspended in that that love. Yeah, that was that most of my day. And also instructions went out to the teams of Hunas. We have Huna teams all over the world, and they were doing ceremonies, gifting back, gifting to humanity, gifting to the planet in a multiple um multiple protocols and ceremonies and gifting all day long. Okay, we can we can easily take all the energy coming in and just receive, but also we want to give back, yeah. Um and so on as well as this, I uh I took uh Sasha Stone. I don't know if you know Sasha Stone. Um, no, I don't no. But his group of people were being in stillness. So he offered the uh, he offered the intention to be in stillness and be at peace at that time. So I feel like this was all being achieved. I feel like all of these things are happening at once. Of course it was. But for me, it also gave me an opportunity to just give my energy back, continue giving energy back to the source as I receive so much abundance myself. Um, and I am so grateful. I'm so grateful. I was in gratitude all day long, brother. Excellent. Excellent. Excellent experience, brother. Excellent um, experience. I don't know how much time you want to give to this, but if I can share one other thing or two oh, items. Please do. Yeah, 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 please do. Good. Yeah, please do. In regards to after this post post uh, eclipse and what's what's mm. to do with these residue energies? Oh yeah. What's left to do with the residue intentions? What's what's the uh, final final um action to do to do with your energies well i leave on the 22nd i go to europe for a month to france greece um portugal uh, specifically azores istanbul germany the uk and then i come home one month what am i doing well two very important pieces that we, of work we are doing that the huna teams in the house of huna are doing specifically a very important and could be it's quite challenging is the we are doing a a, a ceremony i've themed the two-headed snake dark tunnel mission okay so we are entering into the underground energies of the second dimension to flush out any leftover residue energies that have bogged down that are bogged down from the amsterdam side on location in amsterdam the location in Amsterdam, if you are not aware, sweet, sweet, dear ones, this is the Mason Society and the the uh, system uh, of false lights that they erected. System of false light, which is called the thousand points of light, a thousand points of false light. That's their construction. So that one team of the Hunas will be at that end of the tunnel uh, on location, and I will have another team in Azores, Portugal, and location um, of the underworld pyramids. Okay, if anybody here has done, you know, you've done some look, looking around at sacred sites and these things, like you'll know that Azori has underworld, underwater pyramids, right, from Atlantis. And so we are at, we are another team at that end, and we are working simultaneously to push energy through and push light through into that tunnel to clear the residue energies. Now, what are the residue energies? Well, so much has been brought through over the last couple of thousand years, certainly connected to the Gregorian. Let me just tell you that the Gregorians are from Teseda, the island of Teseda in Azores. 
okay, the family lineage of the monks, which became distorted. They were taken over. This is where you get the Gregorian from, okay? The Gregorian system. So, energies that distorted Gregorian through the Draconian to clear your operating system, including the astrologies that you're connected to. So you may, perhaps you may find a way to make the jump across out right. of this distorted matrix. If it's not a reality, then let me just say it's a matrix. One mm -hmm. is benevolent, one is malevolent, one is benevolent. You choose, mm -hmm. you choose. But we are working on the residue energy, energies of this. And, uh, oh, I'm very excited. The team is a very powerful team. Um, I'm always excited to work with the Hunas on the international level. Also, we will be in Istanbul to activate Stargate number 24. Awesome. 24. <laughs> Number 24, whether you believe it or not, whether you know about this or not, whether you care about it or not, I'm sharing yeah. that. Now you've heard it. Yeah. It's in your consciousness now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Woo. Hey, 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 Huna, what, what's your thought? Would you want to um come on Friday? How's Friday, Friday for you? Yeah. Oh, Friday. This Friday jamming, brother. Fr Friday. Friday the, what do we call that? We had a special, a special edition. Yeah, that's a Friday. It's always about a special, special time. So I'm down. Excellent. Excellent. That, hey, real quick, Huna, somebody in the chat wants to know, they just asked, can you ask his brother if he's familiar with the teacher Akta? Aktun? Can you see the can you see that on the screen? Are you able to see it? Akta, Akta. Ah, it is it is in the feeling. It is in the A C T A H. Yes. 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 The feeling is the feeling is hitting me right in the chest. Mm. Sound the sound, the sound is it's not it's familiar the sound, but mm. in the personality not quite. But listen, when you bring forward names like this, yeah, that is not their only name. That mm. is not their only sound. They're multiple. We all have multiple feelings. If you say uh, Huna Mauta. I have, I have, I'm, I'm, I have many sounds and many feelings throughout my lineage. So when you say "akta," <clears throat> "akta," this, this may not necessarily be a name, mm. but a feeling, a feeling. Mm. Yeah. And if you, if you say, "Well, I'm full of shit," then go ahead and tell me. Go ahead and reveal that, if you don't mm. mind. Mm, mm, mm. Huh? Let, let me Maybe ask you. you did want to know? Let, let me ask you this, uh, real quick, Luna. All right, so first of all, let me just make the announcement. We got 2,000 people in the chat. Huna will be on Friday at 9. I see Ascendant Infinite Goddess. I want to get you on next week, Ascendant Infinite Goddess. So I'm about to bring her on. I'm going to ask her about coming on next week. Huna, I'll, I'm going to have this brother on at 9 p.m. Uh, mm. this Friday. So tune in Friday, this Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern time, the brother Huna Flash. We're going to pick a good topic, and we're going to go in heavy. Una, what do you think? We talk about language a lot, and yeah. the language we use over here for spirituality may be different from the language where you're from that's being used to tap into the divine. What I want to ask you, I was just talking to, I forgot who I was talking to, but in terms of um, primal language or grunts or what's the most primal thing? Like you know, in the English language, they have the vowels a e i o u, and those are supposed to be yeah, divine. The, uh, what the is, alphabet, what is yeah. what's the most powerful thing you think a person could grunt, say, chant that gets them that gets their body body vibrating that gets them in touch with the divine? Well, English you fam you're familiar with my people in the Hakka, yeah? Yes. Now we Hakka. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, the 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 Hakka itself. Is, is an act of defiance, mm -hmm. but it defies to defy um, the energies that are going to swallow you up, to defy the manipulation, yeah? Right, right. So you, if you have sounds, like for instance, I was doing a thing called the mumbling. Mm. The mumbling. Mm -hmm. It's actually a music I write. Mm -hmm. And it's just sound. There's some backing, but it's just sound and the mumbling represents the sound from the conch. Now it's like a hum and a mumbling. So it's a very, very deep 
guttural it- sound and it pushes into the stomach. Can you push that into anybody's stomach at a mm-hmm. certain volume? You will you will begin to disrupt that person's system. Right? Could you give so me an example? Could you an example, example could be yeah. an MO volume and even lower octave. Right. Okay. Right. Um, that that resonates to the subharmonic frequencies. So it's good for clearing out and helping somebody to purge. Right. Right. You know, ayahuasca is all about purging. You might as well just call it purging. Mm. Right. Instead of ayahuasca, just call it purging. Mm-hmm. Well, this mm-hmm. does the same thing as ayahuasca. It'll help you purge. Mm-hmm. Right. Without even in- ingesting anything, without ingesting the plant medicine, you can purge just through these sounds. It's a vocal ayahuasca. Wow. It's Man. light. And it's the light inside of the water, which is light inside of sound. Yeah. 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 Sound and light. It's the sound and light. Now, if you to take a conch, um, you know what a conch is, yeah, the big shell. Yeah. And you learn how to blow that the best you can and you aim it straight at somebody. Man, it's really, really powerful. And amplify that sucker. Do the oh, best yeah. you can. Yeah. Right? These sounds, they're humming, they're mumbling. And then also when you when you go to higher frequencies into the up into the harmonic register and higher octaves, yeah. you're going into the consciousness into the crown. Now, what is those sounds? I, I typically we typically in the Lemurian languages, ma ha ka wa ta he ta wa ka ha ma which means to go there and come back again. Mm. When you when you present this sound, like many mudras and mantras, mm-hmm. um, this one in particular spirals counterclockwise in a continuum. Mm. So so the practice is maha kawata hitawaka ha maha kawata hitawaka ha maha. So there's a there's a, a a fulcrum in the middle that spins right. it. Right. And then and eventually as you go faster, it'll just sound like you're on a higher octave. And then when you slow down, sweet dear ones, use use rhythm, use speed, use tempo, and use volume. For most most phrases, a two letter phrase, yeah, two letter mm-hmm. phrase, a two letter, a, a two note voicing in music terms, a two mm-hmm. note voicing or a three note voicing. A lot of musicians, top musicians, use this terminology, you know, two note voicing or three note voicing, mm-hmm. and um, it, whether it's like for instance, when brother was going akta, akta, now ta means first stone, it means the first crystal. Ta, mm-hmm. ah, ta. Okay, if, so for me, that would be referring, what he's saying is referring to a crystal. Mm-hmm. And that could be the crystal being that he is speaking of. Mm-hmm. And in other words, we are all crystal beings. We are all mm-hmm. akta. Mm-hmm. Huh? We are all akta. If mm-hmm. you receive this inst- in, in information this way. Indeed. So, mahakawata itawakahama, there and back again. Here's another one. Un ul o ep to no e nu eb ma il i. Okay, when you you speed that up, slow it down, you drop the octave, you raise the octave. These codes are known as the undoing. Mm. It's the undoing, and when it undoes what doesn't serve, you replace it with your highest intention. So what's being backfilled is only light. That's your right. highest from your higher self. Mm-hmm. Then that that is and let me share just before I go, okay? One other yes. thing. Yes. Where did those sounds come from? What how did I how does these sounds come about? This is a shamans don't just sit around and receive things, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We don't just sit around and channel things. We also mm-hmm. create and build things to support the planet and humanity. Mm-hmm. We're not all here just to to make magic and get what uh, what we want for our ego. No, well, has been 
but actually we're turning a corner. So a lot of shamans. Mm. So these letters, they come from, they remove the dark energy from the owners of the months of a year. For instance, June. Mm -hmm. yeah, Juno, the Caesar, the emperor, the murderer, the thief, the pedophile. All of these months are named after all of these times of types of egos, yeah? And all mm -hmm. children are born under those egos. Mm -hmm. Even still today, mm -hmm. born under Augustus, Septimus, all of them. These are these are, these are not wanted, not needed anymore. So what what is the so the energy gets pulled out of that alignment and we do away with doesn't serve by speaking the energy that does serve. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. from Juno or June, it would be Un. Un mm. is the energy. Mm. So from July, the energy for July is Ul. Mm -hmm. So from August, the usable energy, the light energy is O, which is, means frequency in the Lemurian language. Mm. Uh, and, and, and Septimus will be September. From September comes uh, the Ep. Ip. Ip. So Ip. pulling the light energy out of what doesn't didn't serve us, which did, and and in the end, what gets undone is these seasons and these months are these months of the year do not exist because they do not exist anyway. Right. They are just names of emperors and generals who are murderous and the scum. Mm. Okay. And we and our children were named and registered and put on the contract under their egos. Talk about being born under a bad star. All of them are bad stars. Mm. Just check the history out, people. Come on, sweet dear ones. You know what these Romans and these gods of war were all about. Mm. They served. Now they no longer serve. Mm. Yeah. Ascension. It's called ascension. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's called raising up. Not, yeah. not raising <laughs> down. <laughs> yeah. yeah, love it, love it, man. Love it. Okay, so... Hey. Huna, man, I look forward to having you on Friday, 9 o'clock. I will definitely call you tomorrow so we could decide on the exact topic. And uh, we're going to get going Friday, man. We're going to make it happen. I'm down, brother. The post hey, the clip these, show. Okay. These sounds, I don't mean to uh, offend anybody. If your name is Augustus and, you, and you're a good person, then you are doing this name a good service, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me just put that there in my <laughs> opinion, all right? Indeed, indeed. Leave yeah. your um leave your contact info before you get out of here, my brother. Okay. Office at hoh.earth. Office at hoh.earth is my email. My website is hoh.earth. Mm -hmm. We work with dot earth, brother, because mm -hmm. dot com means slave master over slave market. Mm. Corporation over market means slave master over slave market. That's what we don't use dot com. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Get out of there. Get on out of there. Yeah. So you hit me up with that email and and the website and then also Huna Flash TV on YouTube. Indeed. There's a ton yeah. of ton of shows. There's a t I just had shows with I've had shows with Roseanne Barr. She's been my guest. Mm -hmm. Anybody knows Roseanne Barr? Mm -hmm. You know who she is. I've had, I've had shows with, with Sasha Stone was just on my show. Mm -hmm. So we are really, everybody's getting ready to do this, bro. We're all lining up. We're all preparing. We're all coming together. Yeah, you you know this. And most of all, on your show, uh, <laughs> well, I can be the most gangster. <laughs> hey, man, I want you to be yourself. I want you to be free. I want you to express how you truly feel, man. I, and I appreciate it. Your first show was legendary, brother. And thanks for calling in tonight. And I will, I will see you on Friday, Huna. Much love. All right. Peace, my brother. Peace, brother. Shout out to Huna Flash right there. Our first show was classic. Y'all need to go check that out. You can type in Black Magic 363 Huna Flash and it'll come up. First, first show is definitely a classic. He will be on this Friday, 9 p.m. We literally just planned the show live on the air. So um, I think that's April 12th, I think. Today's the 9th. I think that's April 12th. Well, he'll be on this Friday. Because he's about to go out of town. So he'll be on this Friday. Let's get to another call. Let's get to Ascending Infinite Goddess. Queen, are you there? What's going on? What's going on? Hey, Brother Rich. What's going on with you? Hey, hey, doing great, doing great. 
What's on your mind? You got any eclipse stories? What's on your mind? Talk to me. So no eclipse stories. Right. <laughs> I saved right. my ass in the house. Okay. Um, I I just wanted to say, as far as your experience and mm. your sentiments, like I completely agree. I did share what spirit shared with me. Um and you know, some of my loved ones, I was like, hey, you may want to stay out this energy, not because the solar eclipse was scary. That's not what it is. Um, and not because it was a new moon, which is dark, which energy can be kind of chaotic, not that, but because of what man was doing, right? Because what the government was doing, they mm. were kept trailing it up. I'm in Florida yeah. um, and they were spraying everything everywhere. All right. Yeah. They, the, in Texas where they were expecting rain, they were spraying, you know, they cut CERN on, they were shooting the rockets up. They were doing, they shot like nine rockets. <laughs> they were doing so much. Wow. So yeah. it was just about staying inside to kind of avoid that. Now in the morning, I did go out with little one. We ran, you know, we grounded, we played. Um, but during the eclipse itself, I was inside. I had some clients reach out to me. I was speaking to them, um, did some back office work to watch a movie. And then I was putting, um, I was playing some music mm. and I was playing my uh, Benny the Butcher, uh, Kambada mix. And mm. I played your Holy Ghost 3 album. I, I yep. played it again. And that shit was hitting different. <laughs> so Ooh. I was charged up. I was listening to some of this stuff again. I mean, you know, I, I bought it pre-order and then, you know, I came out, but it was hitting different. So that night, last night now, as we're getting ready to wind down, everybody, you know, drifted off to sleep pretty much okay. But at about one o'clock in the morning, everybody was up. All my boys, I have three boys here. They were up and mm. didn't sleep all night and didn't let me sleep all night. So um, that the new moon energy was, you know, something different after it was charged up from the sun. And then today, as I went out and was grounding, I felt very um, tingly, for lack of a better word, but it was energetic very energizing. Mm -hmm. um, and there were a lot of things that I was thinking about regarding relationships. Relationships is also very heavy um, on my mind. So I just, you know, shout out to everybody and their experience. And what you said about projecting is very, very real because mm -hmm. a lot of times, you know, mm -hmm. people will jump from religion to spirituality and then they want to bring that condemning type energy with them. Oh, you're going to do this or oh you're gonna go do out and do that and oh you shouldn't do this no everybody's experience is everybody's experience and if your spirit says stay inside stay inside if your spirit says right. go out go out if right. your spirit says float in the water float in the water because right. part of this experience is allowing everyone else to have their experience their without experience. judgment yes. right so it's a beautiful thing there's room for everyone there's room you know everybody cannot be the same Although we're all on the same journey, we can't all be the same. So right. um, that was something I did get into perspective. And I definitely gave gratitude and thanks yesterday. Um, definitely was thankful to Mother Earth because I know she low-key sick of our shit. <laughs> That's why volcanoes and tsunamis and earthquakes are happening in places, you know, very crazy. But um, definitely gave gratitude to Mother Earth as well. And that's just one thing that I would admonish everyone to do, just show a little bit more appreciation, right? 420 is not just the weed day, it's also Earth Day. So make sure you do something for Mother Earth for Gaia on that day as well. So that's that. That's all I wanted to come in and share. I appreciate you and I appreciate your audience. Let, let, let me let me ask you this uh, real quick, um, Ascendant Infinite Goddess. And I do want to, I, I got to um, talk to you about coming on the show. I want to get you on next week. Uh, so I want to figure out exactly, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to look at some of the links. You sent me several links, but I definitely want to do a show and tap in with you next week. So we'll, we'll talk about that. I'll either text you or call you um, later this week and we'll talk about that. But family, I definitely want to get the sister on uh, next week. Sister's definitely tapped in. So just like I said with Huna, he'll be on Friday. This sister will be on next week. So you can look forward to that show as well. All right, family. And I'll keep you updated with that. Um, what I want to ask you real quick. You know, Phil, I don't know if, did you peep the show with Dr. Phil Valentine? I did. So uh, a lot of sisters got mad at some of the things he said at the end. What I what I noticed is going into the age of Aquarius and us talking about 
the rise of the divine feminine energy and us considering what transpired and went down during the age of Pisces and what many considered to be um, the age of, um, I guess you could say, the divine masculine or masculine energy or patriarchy or whatever term that is being used to explain what went down. What is your thoughts about being a leader? A shout out to Huna for the for the um donation. My brother Huna just sent me 500. I appreciate it, Huna. I really appreciate it. I want to give that brother a shout out. That, that's a real good brother right there. Real good brother right there. Authentic brother. And I love people who are authentic. I love that authentic energy. So shout out to that brother. But um, Ascendant Infinite Goddess, I want to ask you, in terms of leadership, what's your thoughts on leadership and the woman being a leader of the household, the man being a leader of the household? What's your whole thoughts about this whole talk? And it's not just Dr. Valentine. It's the internet talk about should the man should lead, the woman should lead. What, what is your thoughts and your journey spiritually? What is your thoughts on that? Okay. So again, everyone has their place and it's all a balance. Now, when women lead, when divine feminine, I should say, takes the lead, it is very emotional. It is very nurturing. And in other realms of this universe, feminine energy does take the lead. It on other planets and just the universe in general is just feminine is the creative energy so that's the the underlying but masculine because it's been distorted for so long now you have these terms such as toxic masculinity but we do need the masculine to take the lead in certain points when it comes to power and control and uh I, I don't want to use the word ego, but I'm going to use the word ego very loosely, okay? Um, when it comes to that, those forms, masculine does need to be in charge, but we both balance each other out. So bringing the feminine energy into play in the household and then even in the government, right? If you want to feed into that dynamic. Having a feminine energy in the lead is not hurtful, right? And it's not about, oh, you know, bleeding hearts or anything of that nature. No, but you do need care and you do need nurture, especially in aspects of teaching, of creating, of artistry. If you want to be a creative, if you want to create your art in any type of form, you need to have feminine energy. Right. When you look at some of these places that's predominantly masculine, there's not a, a, a loving touch. Right. You go to the bachelor pad, you can look and say, OK, there's not a woman living here. Right. This man is just kind of destroying everything. So I like I how feel, you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I feel you need a balance in everything. Everything, everything needs a balance in my household. Um, I am very traditional, if you want to call. So my husband does take the lead in some things. Um, but he always regards my input. He asks, you know, how do I feel about certain things? And I relinquish my power as difficult as it can be sometimes, right? I do relinquish my power to him. That's not being submissive. That's being a helpful hand. I know that he is a little more strategic and a little bit more calculating. And I can come in with an undertone and compliment and say, well, maybe we should do this or go this way, right? Similar to your story of how you said you, you know, change plans with your lady. Right. And she came in and she complimented. Exactly. Exactly. It's yeah. not a submissive, it's a helpmate. And that's right. what we're here to be. But overall in the universe, I mean, feminine, we rule things. We rule things. <laughs> so um, that is that. And a lot of the times when the men are doing things, it's because of a woman. It's not because of another man. Right. Mm -hmm. A lot of the actions they do is to please the feminine counterpart. You know, it's funny. I mean. The, 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 the very last thing you said, I mean, pretty much everything you do as a man, well, just for me, just using myself, for example, you do all this, like you said, to please a woman. Like you, you do all this shit. You go, you work hard. You do this, you do that. You want to impress a woman. We, we, we wear a certain thing. A lot of it, a lot of the things we do is to um, impress women. And I think that I would love for, uh, um, and I'm glad that I asked you this question and you answered it the way you did. I think um, honesty is, is, is important. 
and uh, transparency is important in these times. I appreciate Dr. Valentine for what he said and expressing his opinion. I think we all should be entitled to our opinion without yes. feeling like somebody needs to be canceled. That was his opinion about right. the direction of our culture. And he feels as though our culture is embracing the city girl culture in which the women are behaving a certain way. And he commented on women. I don't know how you feel about men, but that's what he commented on women. But, um, you know, I love hearing both perspectives and you saying what you said about the universe. You know, I, I, I could probably see that. I could probably see that happening. I mean, me personally, just talking to you, um, a son of infinite God, it's like, I'm a born leader. Like I'm, I'm like, I'm like built for leadership. So, um, I feel as though personally, when I hear the talk about back in this time, the woman or back in that time, I feel as though wherever I incarnate, if I'm a man, I'm going to have some form of leadership. I don't, I don't, I'm, I don't care who's leading the woman, the man, an animal or insect. I'm a born leader. So I'm a lead wherever I go and wherever I incarnate in this, in this realm. But I understand and I appreciate the collective culture of realms or the, the way things are in general. I'm just saying me specifically, I'm a born leader, but I could totally understand when the sister say, like you say, you go to bachelor pad, shit all fucked up. You're like, oh man, ain't no woman been here. I mean, niggas just living like rats and dogs. <laughs> you know, like yeah. rats and dogs. And you're like, a woman needs to get in here immediately and fix it. I, I totally get that. But I, you know, I just appreciate the conversation in general. I really appreciate the conversation in general. And I hope that we could talk to each other in a way in which we don't feel offended from what the other uh, person is saying. Because oftentimes when a man says something about a woman, she has to be defensive. When a woman says something about a man, he has to be defensive. And we're not listening. We're just defending. You know, sometimes you don't, you're not listening to a person. You're just waiting to respond to what yep. the person just said. So, yeah, I just hope I hope that we could really get it. And I really appreciate it. I feel like you talk from your heart. And I love that. And that's why I pre I want you to be on the show next week and just appreciate your time. Uh, before you before you leave, um, Ascendant Infinite Goddess, tell the people your contact information just in case they want to reach out to you. Please. Puna got me scared to say my website because I got uh, that dot com. Dot com, <laughs> right? Oh, man. Oh, man. Um, the best way to reach me is my website, www.ascendinginfinitegoddess.com. Um, you can call or text me at 786-828-8722. If I'm available, I'll answer. I normally do not pick up my phone after nine o'clock though. That's my business line. Um, so it's normally off. But 786-828-8722 to call or text. Um, my website is my blog, my email contact form, all my services, mental healing sessions, chakra sessions, angel oracle readings, and then all my handles on socials. I have Instagram, Facebook, my YouTube channel, and TikTok, which I'm not really on, but I'm there as Ascending Infinite Goddess. So my handle's the same everywhere, but that's how you can reach me. All right, all right. Thanks for calling in, and I will talk to you yeah. soon, and we'll get it going next week on the on the channel. Yeah, yeah. Let's link up, brother Rich. Let's go. Oh, yeah. All right, talk to you soon. All right, peace. peace. Later. Bye. All right. Shout out to that sister there, long time supporter of the channel. Um, always, you know, has something uplifting and high vibrational to say. So I appreciate that sister. I'm, I'm gonna get her on next week. I'm gonna get Huna Flash on this Friday. You know, so we're going to get it going, do what we got to do. Uh, family, shout out everybody. Anybody who wants to, I think I'm going to be on for about 15 more minutes. Uh, what y'all talking about in the chat now? Y'all like, somebody said, all the prophets are men. I mean, hey, all the prophets I know about is men. I don't know if that's what we are just, just because what we are being taught. But um, do know about a lot of male prophets. So let's see what else y'all saying about. Like I said, this is a much needed conversation, but in a way that we shouldn't feel insulted. Um, so I don't, you know, just because a brother. One thing I would say to a woman, the, the sisters out there and to women is that don't think because a brother may have a harsh tone that he loves you less than a man that's pandering. There's a lot of pandering brothers on the internet. And I'm warning sisters to be wary of the pandering men that are on the internet. The men who just pander the woman and tell you you got all day. It's just talk. Sometimes it's just words. 
I advise you to use your energy and your heart space to, you know, kind of decide whether that's coming from an authentic place. Because there's a lot of pandering going on on the internet. And uh, I wouldn't want brothers who express themselves and are not pandering to get looked upon in a certain negative light. Let's see what's going on in the uh, chat. Uh, somebody said, you can tell when someone is speaking in with love, harsh or not. Yeah, yeah, I think you can. I agree with that. I, 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 could, I could agree with, I could definitely, I could definitely agree with that. I could definitely agree with that. <clears throat> yeah, let's see what else y'all talking about. Like I said, very, very important, very important topic. Yeah, somebody said, Let, let's not forget the Sybils. Yeah. Yeah, completely erased from history, not taught in schools, rarely talked about in um, conscious circles, the Sybils. Shout out to Vicki Dillard. Uh, Rod Hayes talks about them. You know, but shout out to the Sybils and what they created and what they, um, information that we're still using to this day that was stolen and repurposed. The Vatican may have access to certain certain organizations may have access to, but it was these, it was these magnificent queens who, you know, taught the world certain things. So shout out to the Sybils, you know. Shout out to Boss Life TV. She says, I love this live, very authentic. Yeah, yeah, I'm really very authentic. I really, you know, I, I wanted this live to be authentic, you know. I think post eclipse, we should all strive to be more authentic and not trying to conform to somebody's standards of us, whether it's, you know, it could be Christian, it could be conscious, it could be Muslim, Islam, it could be Christianity. You know, I feel as though authenticity is important and at the same time respecting somebody's um, feelings at that same time. Like somebody said, it's all in the delivery. I do think the delivery is important and you know, we got to, sometimes we say things that are true, but our delivery may be off. And we should take that in consideration when we're saying certain things that we know may offend a certain group. We should take our delivery and to um, keep that in mind, keep our delivery in mind. You know? Uh, Razor Sharp said, can someone please repost the backstage link? Sure. I'm going to take a couple of more questions. I'll probably take two more. Let me post this link. Uh, somebody said, yeah, she wasn't feeling what he said either. You know what I want to ask the sisters in the chat? So do y'all think in terms of a household and decision making in the household, the main decision making and, and the direction the household should be going in, do y'all feel as though a man should do that? Do y'all feel as though y'all should do that? Some sisters say that they have to do it because the men that they come across are incompetent. So is it a matter of the men you come across are incompetent? Or do you think overall, that's just a woman's job overall? I'm trying to figure out, do you feel like you're forced to do the leading or you want to do the leading regardless whether you're with a competent man who has extreme amounts of leadership? I'm just curious. So let me get to this next call, and um, that that's a joint venture. It should be a consultation. It should be a part. It's a partnership. Yeah, you know, you know what it is. You know why I asked that because um, in terms of leadership, I feel as though a lot of stress, masculine energy has to get exerted. Living in this realm, living in this world, embracing the world, talking, making decisions, talking to people here, decide all that shit is. It could be taxing on your psyche. So in my opinion, I feel as though a woman wouldn't, wouldn't even want to deal with most of that shit. It could be draining. That's the best word I could, I could use. It could be very draining being a leader. So you always have to, you lead and you always have to revitalize yourself. You always have to re-energize yourself. So I would just think that a woman is like, yo, you're sitting there with a whole man, but you're doing this work that's draining. And he's just chilling. That shit don't add up to me. He's chilling and you doing all the draining leadership work. It kind of like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, don't you, wouldn't you want him to do that? 
and you like the sister, and you just come in like, if you see he's going the wrong direction, you say it in a feminine way, which he can't deny. That's how I look at it. So I'm like, why would a woman want to do that draining work? If the man is right there, he's competent and he's a leader. That's what like, that shit is draining. Like, I don't know if y'all think this shit is just cute. It's cute to say a woman is, this is a woman. Being a leader can be draining. That shit can be physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, whatever Lee you want to say, that shit is draining. And you have to be built for it. You have to know how to recharge yourself. You know how you have to know how to continuously tap in to this, to this divine power to recharge yourself. Because often when you're the leader, the only place you could go to to recharge is from divine. Because the people are looking for you to lead. You don't go to them to charge. They come to you to charge. And you don't go to nobody in this room to charge. You go to divine. So it's like, yeah, I mean, being a leader is not easy work. So I'm just trying to figure out. Y'all want to do that shit? Y'all really want to do that shit? Somebody say he obviously ain't. No, I'm a magnificent leader. I'm, I'm talking about, I'm not just a leader. I am a magnificent leader. And that's you speaking from emotion. I'm an absolutely magnificent leader. I don't even know how long you've been in a relationship, if you have a man, a husband, or what. But I'm an absolutely magnificent leader. Just look at this channel. Look at the community. Look at what I'm doing. But I'm just asking. It's a question I have. Like I said, it, it's about being transparent and us having an adult conversation without passively insulting each other or passively taking jabs at each other. And that's what that's what we do, you know. We 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 feel away, we we feel triggered, and we passively take jabs at each other. Can't take jabs at each other. Just because you get triggered by something. Yeah. So, but call in, you know, call in. I, I welcome you to call in, you know. But I'm like, you know, like, yeah, I, I could get why people say Phil was insulted. I could get that. I could get why people feel like he was insulted. And I could feel what, get why people say he was telling the truth. I, I could get both sides, but I, you know, I could, I could see why women would feel that way. It was a harsh delivery. It was a very harsh delivery. And I've seen people say the same things he said, but not get ridiculed because of the delivery. So I, I totally get it. I totally get it. Star girl. I totally get it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to say I don't, you know, I don't get it. I totally get it. Yeah. But, uh, let's get to, let's get to, um, another question. My, my, my brother Razor Sharp been on here for a while. Rick, uh, uh, look, I'm gonna get to Ke Kelly. I'm gonna get to you in a second. Oh, Yo, you know what's funny? I literally just clicked on the brother Razor Sharp, and um, and um, he hung up. So I guess it was meant for Kelly to come on here. Kelly, are you did? Oh, I love your show. This is my first time calling in. I've Thank been you. watching for like, oh my gosh, seven or eight years. Ooh, I wanted okay. to ask you about. Yeah, mm -hmm. I want to ask you about this art that I do. It's called uh, the Tree of Life. What is yes. my take on it? And it's all color coded. Okay. Like it's all by number. So this is actually the number 24. And I heard uh who in the flash say something about 24. Mm -hmm. And I did this, I started working on this this morning. Mm -hmm. And so as you flesh this all out, it always adds up to like the six point star. And I've been listening right. to the Taj Jamal a lot and everything, and everybody, and I know that the number six is the number of mankind. I want to know what's your take on this, and I'm gonna get another one too that's bigger. Yeah, let me see some more. But I mean, that's sacred geometry, sis. Um, I would advise you to. Well, I think that that's fire. I see it already. Yeah, let me take it down. Oh, I didn't know you were gonna give me so, give to me so fast. I'm so nervous. No, 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 I, 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 that's dope. Um, sacred geometry patterns are very healing. They're very therapeutic, and they tap into our DNA. So mm -hmm. I would advise you to continue make. Oh, that's beautiful, sis. Oh man, that is beautiful. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful, sis. And they always and I don't I don't that's know what it's gonna look like until I do it. But it's so you do it. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, dope. And I choose the number and I choose some colors and I just do the same pattern horizontally and then diagonally. It I always know, makes six points. It always makes a six point star. It always comes out that way. Yes, it's different wow. patterns, but it's always six points. Here's another one. The number nine, actually, when you do the number nine, it turns into an unk. Uh-huh. Let me see that. 
Oh, you got something going on, sis. You got something. I mean, literally, like you know, you got a backup. I can't, see, I can't see it. Hold on, backup, backup. I can't see that one that good because it's kind of dark. Yeah. Yeah, I can't see that one that good. It's kind of dark in there. Yeah, this light. The last one was fire though. Yeah, can't this is it right here. Let me see that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's uh, way bigger. Like if I had connected it to more canvases, it would turn into. Dang, I don't know why I can't get this hmm. straight. It would turn into an unk. Yeah. It would look like an unk, and it's the number nine. And they also have these little alien faces in it all the time. I don't know what that means. Yeah, we can always make face. Yeah, 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 I see it. <laughs> I can look at anything and make a face out of it. That's something about our psyche. We make faces out of everything. I see the face. Yo, yeah. that's dope. Listen, tell the people, um, so what, you sell those or you just- I have not doing? sold any at all. I so just put them around my house. And I was going to ask you, do you think I could sell that? <laughs> oh, of course. Okay. Of course. Oh, my this God. Money is an energy exchange, sis. It, because you created that, if somebody resonates with that, you deserve to be compensated for it. There's nothing evil about an energy exchange. If you create that from your heart and you tapping into the divine realm, you and, and you want to, that's if you want to, other people to have your creations, you deserve to be compensated fairly for it. And that's your total discretion about how much you should be compensated for it. Nobody can tell you. This is your world. I just, you know, I, I just gave a talk about that earlier, but that's some good stuff, sis. And I would, you know, it's told, I would say just follow your heart if you want to or if you don't want to. But I think you want to something, and that is sacred geometry, and it is, it is healing, and that is our technology. That's mm -hmm. technology right there. Sharif just talked about that on my channel the other day. What we're doing, this is our technology. So th that's advanced shit right there. An alien will come down here and snatch that shit away from you mm -hmm. and take that shit on his spaceship. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And utilize that because he know how to. But uh, um, do, if, if, do you, you have a social time media? I'm, on, I'm gonna be on Etsy. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a social media handle or something? Anything you want people to follow you on? Follow um, you, on? you just want to call in right another. Now. Yeah, I don't even right. post anything ever. Okay. <laughs> okay. Listen, sis Kelly, I'm here. Anytime you want to call in, when I do these live call ins, you can hit me up. And I would love to tell the people about your creations. You're tapped into something, obviously. Keep up the great work. And whatever you decide to do is the right decision. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. You don't know how much energy you just infused into this art just now. <laughs> that, that, that's what I'm here for. You don't know how much energy you infused to that art. You <laughs> yeah. infused all that energy to that. But, Kelly, thank you for calling. I appreciate it, sis. All right? Thank you. Thank you. Right, take, take care, Kelly. Shout out to Kelly, man. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. That was a great call. And, um, you know, we're all, we're all so talented. Like I was just telling y'all that I'm good at this shit here. Like I'm, I'm in my prime now. Like we should all be confident about what we do and we all should get encouragement from people once we're tapped into our purpose. So don't be shy to give somebody a compliment if they're doing something great. I ain't gonna wait on nobody's compliment. I'm gonna compliment my mother effing self. That's how I get down. You know, I'm from Harlem. So we just, we don't wait. We just compliment ourselves. We don't wait for the compliment. It, from Harlem, where I'm from, we just start complimenting ourselves. And to the world, be like, God damn it, he's right. That is that nigga. I'm him. They be like, yeah, you right. You know what I'm saying? That's how we do. But yeah, shout out to Kelly. Um, I just look forward to complimenting all of y'all because we're all great at something. I'm not shy about giving people flowers. That's my job. I told you the other show, I'm a hype man. I hype up good stuff. I make people rich on this show. I hype up good shit. You come here with good shit, I'm going to hype it up. My energy is, a, I, I got a mag, electrifying energy. So if you got something good, I'm going to let the world know. And we all got something good, family. All of us. All of us got something. All of us got something good. You know? Yeah. Um. Let's get to the next one. Let's get to the next one. Uh, let's see who's in the chat. Uh. Where's Ray, Razor Sharp, man? Nigga, you, you, you hung up last time, man. What's, what's up, Razor Sharp? What's up? <laughs> man, I've been trying to... Uh, my phone just keep dying. I came for a hike. I'm in the middle of nowhere. I had uh -huh. to get back to my car. But Ooh. first things first, I want to say thank you. I discovered your channel about uh, five years ago when I kind of took this spiritual enlightenment, you know, deep dive thing a little more serious. Um, mm -hmm. And during that path, your channel... I would say if there was a hundred percent of growth for me, your channel is like a good 40% of it 
just the oh, information oh. and the access to stuff. So I really mean it. I thank you for your sacrifice and your time. I studied under your engineering. I I I mixing and all that. I know you're in the music, you do a lot. I know this shit takes so much energy and time. So I oh, yeah. truly appreciate you. Like, thank you. Thank you. Now, all that said, um, I'm gonna get into this real quick. Yes. My um I'm a backtrack on the whole um uh, being a leader thing. So I won't go into super details, but my dad is a chief of a very known tribe in West Africa. Mm -hmm. He's respected. He's the man, but he will mm -hmm. be the first to tell you without my mother and nothing happening. Woo! Talk to so I, I believe the face is supposed oh. to be the male, right? But, but the other side and everything else, the intuition and all that comes from the woman. So the woman low key is like really the one behind the scenes, but the man is the one that carries it. Right. I work in private security for some very wealthy people. Every time we go out, it's, it's a woman, my main client. Every time we go out, she gives me the money to pay the check. Mm -hmm. I never understood it mm -hmm. until time went by. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that has to say something about something. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter who's doing what, just the face it's the man and the energy and the intuition is the woman. So that's all I have to say about that topic. Now, fast forward about the eclipse thing. Like I said, I got on this path about five years ago. I study with a very known Taoist priest on the West Coast. I live in Los Angeles. Now, in Taoism, they believe that um, the left eye and the right eye, one represents the sun, the other represents the moon. The third eye or your first eye it's the only one that sees the self. So when people are talking about looking at the solar eclipse and this and that, even if you didn't see anything with your naked eyes, if you focused on your third eye, you would feel it. That said, when I went outside on so on the West Coast, it started at 10.06 and it was done at 12.22. Now I'm sure King Simon is somewhere with the numerology or Lord Strang on one of them can kind of break that down. But if you do the math, um, the 1006 is seven. The sweet spot in between the eclipse was 1111 and it ended at 1222, which is a seven. So it's seven, 1111, and seven. If you look into those numbers, you will see the mystery and explaining a lot of stuff. Moving forward, that said, um, at the sweet spot, 1111 in Taoist, um, so backtrack, the um, fireworks. Fireworks were invented in China, however many long ago, and they were actually designed to scare off negative energy, to scare off demons. So anybody who follows a Taoist tradition or most monks, when the eclipse were happening, they were all lighting up fireworks because the dark energy that was coming in was extremely heavy. So the fireworks helps repel that energy. All that said, I was very skeptic about all the stuff but I was doing Qigong for at least two hours before the eclipse came on. i tell you, when I lit up the fireworks, and I don't like fireworks, but when I lit them up, I was paying full attention to myself and I felt lighter after it was done. It was almost like something got off of me and it had to be some kind of negative energy or negative vibe. And um, I just really, something in my spirit was telling me, I have to share that information is going to affect someone somewhere. I'm the first skeptic on anything, but um, I went into this with an open mind and I was just like, prove me wrong. And I paid extreme attention to everything I was feeling. And it was trippy. There was a heavy gravitational pull happening and there was definitely some dark forces lurking. And um, yeah. So in the future eclipse firework or any kind of fire, would kind of help keep away any negative vibes around. That's all I really wanted to share and just to say thank you. Hey, man, listen, brother, I really appreciate you calling in, man. This is why I love hearing people's experiences. You talking about your father and just everything that you did during the eclipse. Amazing story, brother. I want to thank you. Do you want to share any information from the people or are you good? Like your contact Not Okay. Not at the moment, man. I'm in deep school right now. I'm five years in, maybe in another three years, you know, when I when I feel truly confident about the information I've gathered, I'll definitely reach out. For now, I'm just yeah. a humble student. 
brother, I'm gonna be here in three years. I'm gonna be here till the day I, I leave know you will. I'm, I'm, I'm the forever God. I'm the forever I know God. you will. I, I plan. I plan on going to Atlanta at some point later this year. I'm gonna look for you. Yo, wait, check this out. Listen, listen, listen closely. I got something big coming up in August. I didn't make the announcement yet, but if you could make okay. it in August to this event, it's going. It's going to be a big event in Atlanta. I would say definitely try to make it and stay tuned for the announcement because it's coming soon. Say no more. Thank you, I, sir. Thanks th th for calling in, right? The peace. Peace. Yo, this is why I love to do these shows, y'all. Y'all see, do y'all see everybody I've talked to so far? This is amazing shit, man. Communicating with the family globally all over the place, man. This is good shit here, y'all. This is good shit. And this is, um, yeah, somebody, yeah, definitely. No, wrong, um, Chat moving so fast. Yeah, yeah, this show, yeah, yeah. Um, shout out to all the super chats. <laughs> I don't miss um somebody said, Can I play a song? Uh no, not on this platform. You can't play a song. I don't know if it's yeah, not 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 on this show, should I say? Maybe on another show, but not on this show. But I appreciate um appreciate the super chat. Shout out to all the super chats. I didn't get to all of y'all. Obviously, chaos is talking about it's an equal partnership. We were talking about men and women in leadership earlier. Um, I appreciate for all of y'all for um for your work. I mean for your donation. I'm trying to just I got a lot of super chats today, so I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Got a lot of super chats. Um somebody said, so now do not get vexed with women who have had to take on leadership roles as single parents. <clears throat> they have had to morph to survive and raise their children. Not what we wanted, but have had to do. Yes, I agree with you a thousand percent. I I, I told this story before. And um, we're not talking about single parents. We're to, I'm talking about uh, households that may have two genders in the household. And... One man may assume leadership or the woman may assume leadership based on spiritual beliefs or whatever. And we're just discussing who do you think should be the leader? Should it be a partnership? Should a woman um, serve a, a sort of a, a silent leadership? Should a man be a vocal leadership or should a man, you know, we're just, we're having an honest, transparent, non-emotional discussion. And obviously some people get emotional, but as I said, I'm a born leader, like born, like I'm a super leader. Facts. All right. But in terms of what you said, I'm, I told this story before. I agree with you a thousand percent. In terms of single mothers out there, that's one of the most hard. That's the, the hardest, most impossible job to do is to um, play both roles because you're kind of forced to. And I'm not saying it's her fault or his fault, whether the government did it or whether he was a deadbeat or whether he left or whatever. We're not talking about that right now. I'm just talking about the aspect of women having to be a single parent. It's super hard, or even a man having to be a single parent. But right, right, right now, we're talking about women being a single parent because that's what this question is alluding to, or this statement. In terms of women being a single parent, it's extremely hard because all children should have a father and a mother. And what I found, Ch Chanel or Channel One, when I was young, I didn't have a dad, right? And my mom and my grandma raised me. And I noticed my mother was more masculine. She exuded more masculine energy when I was young. And I noticed as soon as I turned 18, she turned that shit down. She turned it down because it was no longer appropriate because I was older now. And now was my turn to implement what she taught me. So she turned it down severely. And I remember it threw me off. And I'm like, why is mom like this now? I, in my mind, I'm like 19. I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, why is mom soft? My mama was hard. I'm like, why is mom soft now? Then when I got older, I'm like, oh, no, she she's raising a boy. My father didn't leave because he because he was a deadbeat. My dad got killed. Shout out to my dad. This is my father. My father used to wear this chain. My father used to wear this. This is my father's. He was an Aries. My dad is an Aries. And my mother's a Cancer. Astrological signs I'm talking about. And I'm a Virgo. I come from an Aries and a Cancer. So the, what my dad used to wear, I, I, I wear now. Um, My mother had to. So when the brothers say sisters are, are masculine or act masculine, unfortunately, brothers, a lot. Some of our sisters are forced to 
because of the circumstance that they are put in and they're raising these boys and boys, young brothers, young, young male children are energetic like a motherfucker. And they're gonna test you and they're gonna do this thing. And they 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 always moving and jumping and they they got they have testosterone. So a woman has to a woman has to alter, she has to alter who she is naturally to some sometimes, not all the times, to raise that boy to the best of her ability. And I remember when I got older, by the time I was 20, my uncle helped out. What really helped me become the man I am today and the man y'all see today, my mother is the number one reason. She kept Farrakhan playing in the house. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan helped me out a lot. Me seeing, I'm my main thing in life as terms of being a man. And like I told y'all, I'm 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 a leader, leader. Like for real, for real. Like I'm not joking. I'm a leader, leader. Is uh my ability with self discipline. I have an amazing amount of self discipline, and um, the Nation of Islam taught me that the importance of self discipline. Those brothers, the way they stand, the brothers exemplify self-discipline. And um, I appreciate my mother for playing Farrakhan in, in the household and just listening to him, you know, taught me, yeah, I want, I'm, mommy likes that. Mommy appreciates that in a man. That's what I want to be. That's what I want to be. I want to have self-discipline like, like, like him right there. I want to have knowledge of self like him right there. I want to be able to speak like him right there. I want to be spiritual like him right there. So shout out to... The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Shout out to my mom for playing that. And my uncle taught me when I got older, being around him was like, it really got me going. So shout out to my uncle. My uncle's name was Charles Preston Merritt. And I named my son, my son's middle name is Charles. I named him after my uncle. So shout out to my uncle for, you know, instilling so many things in me in terms of manhood. But it's like, it's hard for single parents. So I... Y'all not even in this conversation. We talking about people who have a choice with men, and, but the single mothers, y'all got to do what y'all got to do. And that's a very hard situation y'all put in. And, um, you know, I wish the best for y'all out there. It's not easy being a mother raising a son by yourself. It's not easy at all, like at all, at all. So, yeah, yeah, that's that. Um, Let's get to a next. Let's, let me see what y'all talking about in the chat. Yeah, somebody said the nation of Islam will get you right discipline. Yeah, discipline is important. Me, bro, young brothers need discipline a lot. A lot, a lot. You need to be taught self-discipline a lot. A whole lot. So, oh, man. What did I just do? I just did something. Okay, I stretched it out. Okay. Um. <laughs> somebody yeah, Somebody said, Chill Nomad said, that's me as a single mother. I dial back crazy when my son turned 18. Yeah, yeah, you got to be a certain way. They young. You got to, you know, I remember one time my mother had to punch me in my chest one time. I got disrespectful. You got to put that boy in his place. And if you ain't got a man around, that boy might try to test you. You got to put that boy in his place sometime. You know what I'm saying? And and it takes, it takes a little bit of masculine energy. So if you don't have uncles around or whatever... Or whoever, you know, you got to step up to the plate and, and use some of that. We all got masculine and feminine in us, you know. Um, sometimes it's necessary to, you know, as a male to tap into his divine feminine. And sometimes it's necessary for a woman to tap into her divine masculine, depending on the situation. But yeah, that's this is exactly what my mother was faced with, chill no man. So shout out to you. And I'm glad you realized to dial back when he turned 18 and let him you know, do what he got to do and, 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 you know, and find himself when he turned 18 and not just, you know, um, you know, make him a goddamn, a, a, a brute or a buck and just beat on him and scream at him to eternity. Like we gotta, you know, gotta let the boys, you know, be boys, let them, you know, puff their chest out when they get older, let, let them puff their chest, let them feel like how they feel. You know, that's how my mother did when I got older, you know, and I'm thankful and I, and I learned what I had to learn. Yeah, no, we got to get Farrakhan. I would love to get the the the, the um, minister on here. I would love to get the minister on here. I would absolutely love to get the minister. On. I if I get the minister on here, I would I would man, I, I would spend a month get, getting the questions together. Like I told you, I'm great at this shit. I will give the I will give the best interview in in the, in the entire history of humanity. If I have if I interviewed Farrakhan, I will give the best interview in the history of humanity. I will ask the best questions in the history of humanity. 
I don't care if when Toph was around, Toph and 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 whoever, whoever was around, Pata. I don't care who was around it. Nigga, I interview Farrakhan is gonna be the greatest. <laughs> and of course, you know, I'm just you know I'm saying that in a playful way, but that's just how serious I am about interviewing that brother or whatever. You know, let's um let's get to the next caller. We got Bulos Music. You still there, brother? What's up? Yeah, we've been on here for two hours, y'all. What time? It's eleven o'clock. But I right, see Bulos, you done missed out on your chance. Yo. Oh, I see you coming in now. Yo, oh, there you can, go. Can, what's up, man? God damn, what's up? What's man? happening? I remember you from last can time. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes, that's right. Thank you for having me on again, man. I just wanted to share my what I felt with this eclipse. I mean, um, I decided to stay inside, right. not to deal with it, not to absorb that that solar energy at that time. Yes. Um, and I also used some some spiritual protective tools to protect me and my family um, okay. and my space. Um, actually, I'll, I'll share I'll share some of those tools that I use. But first, I want to say, man, like I was, I was very. It's like there's this heavy feeling on me. Um, of I, I, I can I can sort of say it's anxiety, like like you said. But at the same time, it's more like gratitude. It's like mm. I'm being forced. I'm being forced to feel that. <laughs> I mean, forced is probably not the not the right word, but I, I do feel like I need to just embrace that um, a lot and. Um, and yeah, I do feel like my every thought that I have, every action that I take is has to be calculated. I, I feel like everything has a big um, sort of effect um, on any decision I take. So I'm I'm being very careful. I'm extra aware with my with my thinking, my execution. Um, I actually had my car break down yesterday. Uh, two two days ago, and then um, one of the the mechanics he referred me to another mechanic. I'm not sure right. why, mm -hmm. and that mechanic was called Eclipse um, Car Car Repairs, and I was like, "What? <laughs> you like ain't um, that something? Ain't that something?" <laughs> <laughs> Man, that was yeah, that was crazy to me. Uh, um, and yeah, so I just want to also share um, the tools that I've been using. I I, I asked what's his name, uh, Brother Yosef. The, the the master brother Joseph he he um he denied to answer the question he said to me this guy you're asking about uh, I can only reply um, on that on my Patreon so that made me you know even more intrigued I wanna I wanna know why um, we can't discuss you know uh, anything uh, right there but the guy's name his name is uh, Dr Mitchell Mitchell Gibson um, I feel like I wish I wish you could have him on your show brother he's he's a phenomenal phenomenal guy he uh, claims that he is uh toth uh, in in dr mitchell form right. uh and toth his name is dejanti uh his new name um yeah so i just wanted to say that he's got some sound frequencies that are you know that cost money but they actually target exactly what they say they do and there's some digital photos that you can look at that could protect your subconscious uh from any attacks so I've been utilizing him, Dr. Mitchell Gibson, check him out, Tybro. I'm, I'm not affiliated in any way, shape or form. Um, but yeah, so I was uh, I was basically not interacting with the sun. Um, I've, I've got this heavy feeling on me, which feels great, but I, I, just, uh, I just think that it's telling me that I have to be extra careful with my thoughts, words, actions, and um and and yeah e emotions and all that so i just i just wanted to share that man um i hope everybody you know will will, will be protected from all the unwanted energies and and yeah p peace and blessings man rest in peace to brother panic i, I really appreciate you ha having me on again brother rich oh yeah oh yeah now i appreciate you calling and i appreciate you giving your story about your experience with this particular eclipse. And I appreciate your journey. You was talking about an uh, aspect of your journey last time. I forgot who was on the show, but I Macabre. always appreciate Yeah, yeah, Macabre, yeah. I appreciate you. You're, uh, you're obviously serious about this journey, the spiritual experience. And I just want you to continue with it and for you to know that this is a lifelong journey. You know what I'm saying? It's not just a quick fix. Just keep doing what you're doing, but I'm very proud of you, brother. You hear me? I'm serious. I'm very proud Thank of you. Thank you right? so much. I appreciate that so much. Yes, Thank keep you coming up. from you. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Keep it up. I'm going to talk you, to you soon. You, you as well. Absolutely. Thanks, Much love. All right, brother. Peace. peace. Shout out to that brother. Brother called in. Um, He called in about last week or the week before last. And um, the brother's serious about his journey. He's willing to invest. He's willing to spend time. And I, I definitely appreciate that brother.
for um you know taking this thing serious and um I wish that brother the best in his particular journey. I see he's studying Mitchell Gibson. I had met Mitchell Gibson one time before at Long Island University. This is when I, I used to film for Brother Shabash. Brother Shab another brother named Brother Shabash. Shout out to Brother Shabash. Used to let me film for him a um, long time ago. And um, I would film all the greats, Bobby Hammett, Mitchell Gibson. I filmed, I filmed Dr. Drew Pookum for Brother Shabazz before. And um, you know I was coming up. I was coming up in this community. And Shabazz gave me a, a good look. That was a real good look. So I appreciate Brother Shabazz for that. But I met uh, Mitchell, uh, Mitchell Gibson before. So, um, yeah, shout out to that brother. And keep keep up the good work. Let's get to the next caller. We're going to get to Shara Prophet. Hi. All right. What's going on, Shara Prophet? What's hey, up? how you doing, Brother Rich? I love your show. Thank you for having me on. I'm doing awesome. What's on your mind? What's your thoughts on the eclipse? Anything you want to say? Yeah, absolutely. So yesterday, um, I decided to stay in as well. Um mm -hmm. And that, like I said, everybody should just follow what their intuition is telling them to do. So I didn't like my community. I just shared what I was doing and I said, you guys do what you want. But I stayed in. Um, I was led to do meditation and a lot of visualization. I'm a hypnotherapist, so I'm mm -hmm. always working subconsciously. So um, a lot of what I did was I released the things that I wanted to get out of my life and out of my nervous system and my energy mm. into the into the flame of the sun. And then as the moon came in, I envisioned that the moon was swallowing up the old stuff, sw swallowing up that old version of me. And then mm. as it passed over and the sun came back, that represented a rebirth or a, a new version of me. Um, so that was really powerful to do that right. I'm on the East Coast. I'm in L.A. So it was really powerful to do that like around. It was like 1113 was the peak. And I just sat in meditation for like 20 minutes. And right. Right. then I, I passed out, slept for like five hours mm -hmm. <laughs> after that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got up and I and right now today I feel light. I feel relaxed. I feel mm -hmm really happy. And then I also have like this air of like, almost not caring as much as I used to, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. You know what I mean? Like there's mm -hmm. not a, the, the heavy and the weight of needing things to have it happen in a certain way, you know, mm -hmm. needing to be doing this and needing to do that, you know, as a, as a business person, we're always like thinking of things mm -hmm. and something shifted, mm -hmm. something definitely shifted where I released that and that's really powerful coming for me personally, you know, so that's really, really powerful. So that's the way I chose to um, spend the eclipse out there. There was no fear. It was just, I felt the need to be in, to be incubated, to be in my cocoon, to be in the darkness, you know? Um, but for those who went out and they felt led to do that, I feel like you should always listen to your internal guidance first and foremost, you know, because yeah. that knows best. But, um, you know, for me, that worked out really well. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't mind, I would like to touch on <laughs> uh, uh, what Dr. Valentine, because I was present for that, that live. I was in the, in the audience for that live, and it was really oh. interesting to me. Yeah, great. Yeah, I would love to hear you. Yeah, guys. I, I, first of all, I, I followed him for many, many, many years. Much respect to, to mm -hmm. him, you know, always. Um, I I agree that the imbalance with the feminine and the masculine is re is a real thing. I totally agree with that. Um, I have had to do a lot of work myself to balance myself out, um, not not just with the the feminine energy, but both the feminine and the masculine, because you need both in order to live a whole life. You cannot create anything without the divine feminine and the divine masculine. Indeed. Um, indeed. Any any new thing that you want to do in life, you need your conscious and your subconscious. The conscious is the the father, the son, the divine masculine. The subconscious yes. is the mother, you know, yes. is the darkness, is the the emotions. So you need both of those in order to come into the superconscious, which is the new life, right? So yes. all of those things are needed. Um, but I do agree that because we hold both energies, that we need to balance that out. And I think. 
a lot of the reason why some of the ladies got upset was more so his delivery than it was what he yeah, was saying. Yeah, yeah, you know I think what it I mean? was. Yeah, I think it, yeah, uh, it was harsh. It was harsh. <laughs> Yeah. And you know what? It, it didn't bother me personally yeah. because I because of what I do. I'm used to dealing with different temperaments and, and things okay. like that. And, and I felt the passion in what he was saying, you know, mm -hmm. um, but I do believe that delivery is everything. And then you can get a lot more across to people when you are able to temper your own passion. It's OK to be passionate, but you also have to learn how to like, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know how you know hypnosis is a lot of manipulation and things like that, and manipulation in a good way, I, I must say. Yeah. You know, but um, <clears throat> so that that's my take on that. I know, you know, still all respect to him always, and I still love all of his work. But I just felt like that was the main thing that kind of threw some of the ladies off a little bit. Indeed, indeed. All right, and, and what in terms of um what we were talking about earlier. Uh, we was having a mature conversation about leadership. Yeah. Um, and we're just, you know, we're figuring this thing out. We've been lied to so much and we want to create a certain harmony with each other. In terms of leadership, what's your thoughts about the male being the leader or the female being a leader in the household? Is it a, a joint partnership? Should the man be the vocal leader and the woman be the silent? Should a man be the silent and the woman be the vocal? What's your whole thoughts about this whole leadership discussing that like i said not only dr phil valentine but just the whole internet in general that's talking about because everybody's talking about relationships now As, especially because of kevin said kevin samuel smart sparked that debate and uh you know <laughs> after he passed away there's like a thousand clones of him out there trying to regurgitate yeah. what he was saying <laughs> you know what I'm saying they figured out it was a hot it was a hot topic and they want to you know profit from it so what's your thoughts on leadership and man and woman I think that that should be left up to each couple, the individual. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is the reason why I say that. Okay. Because we have to stop generalizing because this is the thing. There will be yeah. women that come in a, in a fit in a feminine vessel, right. In a mm -hmm. female woman vessel. Mm -hmm. However, they mm -hmm. hold a lot of masculine energy that might have crossed over from a past life. So they mm -hmm. may be in this feminine vessel holding a lot of masculine energy mm -hmm. because they need to play out some sort of past life, life karma. Mm -hmm. Same thing for men, right? Vice versa. So mm -hmm. if the if this you know masculine woman gets together with this man who carries a little bit more feminine energy and that works for them, it works for them. Mm -hmm. You know. So I feel like that's something that should just be discussed between the man and the woman. Um, mm -hmm. I know in my relationships, it just kind of naturally happens. I am, I love for a man to take the lead. That's just me. Um, however, I am also very, I'm very much so a strong personality. Um, mm. And I'm lucky to have been in situations where I was able to voice my opinion on things and we were able to come together and make decisions as a unit, you know? Mm. Um, I never felt like I needed to hold back for fear of emasculating someone, you know? Right. Um, so I feel like, I feel like the first thing we all need to do is one heal, whatever we need to heal. That's first mm -hmm. and foremost, mm -hmm. when you heal and we're never fully healed. Right. But when you are aware of yourself, then you know, when you are, kind of teetering on that line when you're about to overstep a little bit and you can pull yourself back and your partner will be able to do the same thing. So it should be a dance. I think it's more like a, a beautiful synergistic dance, the leadership. Sometimes you lead, sometimes I lead, you know? Right. Um, I think there's too much conversation around it. And mm. I think that when we get bogged down in the details of things, mm, then right. what that does is it leaves a lot of room for lack of a better word. It leaves a lot of room for <laughs> demonic entities to enter in and cause a lot of chaos where it could be a lot of peace and, you know, ease. Right. right. So that's my feelings on that. I feel like if, if each person did the inner work mm. and checked in with self, and, ask, and allowed your higher guidance to lead you in your relationship and in your union, I think mm. that's that's probably the sweet spot. 
What what is what is it exactly you do now? You said you're you're a hypnotherapist. What do you do? Yeah, I'm a certified hypnotherapist. I'm also a teacher. I have an online college where I certify other hypnotherapists, and I do a lot of um, metaphysical teaching, spiritual science mm -hmm. teaching, and things like that. No, I could I could definitely I I could you, you seem to be good at you know just speaking, and I, I could definitely see why people will, will want to come to you for services. So. I would just recommend you, you to keep doing what you're doing. Like I've Thank enjoyed this, this brief interaction with you has been a, a good one. And um, I appreciate yeah, that. Thank definitely you. Definitely appreciate your energy and tell the people how they could reach out to you and get some of your services. Sis. Yeah, absolutely. You can go to linktree forward slash Shara profit underscore C H T. So it's my name on here with the underscore yeah. and um, yeah, linktree. I'm Shara profit C H T on Instagram. <clears throat> you, you got to YouTube. Um, you gotta I do. Too. I do. It's Open Door Hypnosis TV. If you can't email me, I'll check out your channel. I will. What's the, um, how can I get your email? Uh, Richandmerritt at yahoo.com. I'll always leave it. Let me. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if you put it in the, in the. Thing, a couple I of people have been talking about your services. I guess a couple of people know you in here. A couple oh, of people, they've been okay. giving you a shout out in the chat. So you, thanks, y'all. I didn't see, I'm not seeing anybody, but you, pop, you must be popping out there, and I don't know. But yeah, you see, do you I, see my? I've, 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 I've DM'd you a couple of times on Instagram. I'm, that that um, unless I, I know it's hard. You know, I know because it's just you're just caught in a, <laughs> you're just caught in a a thousand other DMs and emails, so you're never going to get I'm through sure. to me. But when I interact I with you and have a personal exchange with you, then then that you know that that that, that makes you stand out. But shout, yes. anybody who's trying to hit me up, listen. If I don't respond, it's, it's so many DMs and emails. I it's not it's not me. So you know, whatever. Just took a but listen, the email. Okay, good, great, great, great. Yeah, hit me up on the email. Okay. And I appreciate you um calling in today, but a great conversation. All right. Yes, thank you. Have a good night. Bye, everybody. Have a good night. Peace. All right. Let's um damn, I keep saying I'm gonna wrap it up, y'all, but this shit is so good, y'all. This shit is so good. Are y'all enjoying it like I'm enjoying it, or am I just or am I just delusional? Am I just delusional? Am I am I solar eclipse delusional? Did the solar eclipse make me delusional? Which one is it? Or or is this is just good? Keep it going. I know y'all have me on here to you know what I haven't done in a while. You know what I haven't done in a while? I gotta remember. Hit up my cash app, y'all. Make sure you support Brother Rich. Hit up Brother. I, I I I always forget. I get involved in my show and I'll be forgetting. But if you would like to donate outside of the super chat, because you know YouTube take 40% of that, 30 or 40, something like that, hit up the Cash App. If you appreciate the show or the message or anything, I would appreciate the Cash App. You can always Cash App, Brother Rich. I always share the guests Cash App. I'll be forgetting. I'll be involved in the show and the show is only an hour, so I end up forgetting. But um, you can always donate to my platform, to me personally, on the Cash App. Cash app, dollar sign, Black Magic 363. It's right there on the screen, all right? But yeah, definitely support the channel and the works that's being done. I would appreciate it. All right, family? With that being said, I'm, this might be the last call. I don't know. I'm going to see. I've been on uh, two hours and 15 minutes. I'm, we still got about 1,800 people in here. It's late. I got a great show tomorrow. I'm not going to say who yet, but I'm going to be on here tomorrow. Oh, man. Let's go to the next call. Wild Rose, you you was on here before. You was just on here. Wild Rose eight eight eight. Shout out, sis. What's going on? I can't hear you. Can't hear you. Can cannot hear you. Okay, what's up? Got a cash app already. Shout out to John C for the cash app. That's what's up, John C. I appreciate you, my brother. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, Wild Rose, go ahead, my sister. What's what's on your mind, sister? Please. What's good? What's going on? How are you feeling? I'm feeling magnificent, absolutely magnificent. We're good. Oh, yeah, let me get in. Let me get into the frame. They put on my my right shades too. Yeah, gotta have on my shades, shades okay. for the show. All right, peace to the family. Um, so this eclipse energy, it was for me. It's like it's it's so crazy because it was like, I don't know if it was eclipse energy or what or what the fuck, but it was like, it was just so much ramping up personally in my life for like a few weeks before that. Um. Like, when was that Baltimore Bridge situation? That was like two weeks ago. It was like a week before the eclipse. Yeah, yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. It was like a week before the eclipse, yeah. right? So I had a family member that got sick, right? And so 
I got the news of the bridge and then that happened. And then with the eclipse, the family member passed and it was like a release for me. Right. And it's like, um, it's so interesting because like I was saying, like for three or four weeks before all of that happened, I had things personally going on in my life, like personally, like so personal, it couldn't get more personal. Like, Mm. damn, Mm. damn, what's going on world? Why are you doing it? Girl like that. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, um, and so I went through like a lot of turmoil, a lot of grief, a lot of release, so much release. A family member of mine also went like something's totally separate. But at the time where we both felt like it was so big. Right. And then to go through like the grief and the feeling and to release the pain or whatever comes with, you know, turmoil. And then to find out about like gaining an ancestor, I felt like I felt like birthing pains I th- th- does that make sense I feel like I was giving birth to my own ancestor like you know what I'm saying wow. it was heavy it was heavy heavy I, I felt it so heavily and um you know another one of my family members literally tapped into their psychic powers like they was able to tap into their energy it's just it was just a lot it's been it's been a lot for me so I felt very much like um my roots are Louisiana you know mm-hmm. so I felt like I don't feel no sadness at all no, no. at mm-hmm. all it's it's like full 100 release and i just felt like shh, i got an angel and listen motherfuckers better watch out because this one it ain't a joke it's serious it's for real <laughs> it's for real <laughs> i hear you i hear you so moving forward um after the clips is there any advice you would give uh, the family out there? We all learn from our, from each other's experiences. Any advice you would give people moving forward from something you may have gained that all of us could gain from? Uh, with the with the eclipse energy, I for me, it's just like I feel like it's important to like it's the moon, right? So we're talking about emotions. A lot of emotions, a lot of feelings, being cognizant of that. I'm a cancer, so I'm always trying to be cognizant of my energy and right moving out of the hermit crab energy, not staying in the hydra energy and really emerging into my peacock energy. So that means like, um, you know, being a child of the moon, being a child of the emotions, like being able to acknowledge your feelings. It's like emotions are like the ocean. You know what I mean? It's like the ocean. Now, sometimes, now, unless you're in Florida, yeah, I mean, you not, we might not necessarily like just run and jump into it because it's going to be cold, but it's an energy you can get from just like watching it, sitting with it, you know, same thing with the energies and emotions. That's what, that's, that's what I would suggest anyone do at this time. Like, especially if you're feeling anything that's like waving and riding with you, it's okay. Like take a second and this might, this might take a little bit of time, but like, clear your mind and like you have to imagine yourself out of your body like sitting next to yourself or above yourself or what i don't know if you can control it at first where you hover or whatever but you have to take yourself out and just kind of watch yourself and like oh wow that's me experiencing those emotions looks like i'm gonna be okay like you know what i mean oh how serious this whole like how serious is the situation like it's just about a lot of looking at things like in a real way like how serious is this how much is this physically affecting me and you have to catch that early because the mind affects the body you know Indeed. so you let me just go on and on i i, listen, I could talk yeah, yeah. I could no, do i'm letting you do your thing sis i'm letting you do your thing <laughs> I, I appreciate you sharing your wisdom do you have um any information you would share with the people about how to get in contact with you or yeah absolutely uh i have a youtube channel here on youtube a wild rose 888 uh i do tarot i like to talk about spirituality just we just be jamming really excellent excellent so you do tarot then huh i do i do i do excellent 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 yeah shout out make sure y'all check out i'm I'm gonna check out your channel and and for sure please do and i definitely i appreciate you calling in all right thank you so much i love your channel Thank you for supporting. I appreciate it. All right. For sure. Peace. Bye. All right. Shout out to everybody who called. I mean, every call, um, absolutely amazing. The video calls tonight, everybody who called got something unique to contribute to the conversation. 
Uh, we done been on here for about two and a half hours. I don't know how many of y'all been here from the beginning, you know what I'm saying, since now, but we've been on here for about two, two hours and 19 minutes right now. But, you know, this eclipse shit type shit, eclipse type, type shit, you know, type shit. So we, um, you know, I'm about to conclude, you know what I'm saying? I see, I, I got two more people. Should I get to the last two people? Yeah, Rich died. Yeah, Rich, Rich is died. Rich is died. Rich is died. Somebody said Rich died. Yeah, Rich is died. <laughs> What's oh what's the cash app? Oh, let me give the um yo shout out to everybody who sent the cash app. Some of y'all really yo 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 support it. Y'all y'all show love and I appreciate that because I only shared the cash app for like two minutes and then I took it off. But listen, if you want to support, um somebody asked what's the cash app again. Razor was just on the show. Shout out that that brother had an amazing story as well. Um, if you want to support the channel, you want to support brother rich. Um, you could support directly through Cash App. You know the super chat sometimes, not sometimes, super chat, YouTube, you know, they they gonna they they gonna take their money. They're gonna take their third. I think it's like 35-40 percent or whatever of the, of the super chat. And I appreciate it, even if it's super chat, I'll take whatever I take what I gotta take on the super chat. Just the thought of y'all supporting me is, is really it, it keeps me going. But if you want to support brother Rich in a more direct way. Um, you could cash at me at dollar sign black magic three six three. Uh, thanks for asking, raise the shot. Thanks for asking. What's the cash app? It lets me know that you like, yo, I need to get that, you know, and lets me know. So thanks for asking. But the cash app is dollar sign black magic uh three six three. And um, you know, I I want how y'all think I've been doing this year so far on this channel. How how brother rich been doing so far this year on this channel? How 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 I've been doing so far? Do y'all like the direction brother rich been going in? so far this year i've been really been going hard since 2022 i got a download in 2021 that i had to go super hard and i started going super hard in 2022 so we got 2022 2023 2020 because i took a little break when my son was born i took a mental break i was here but mentally i wasn't here my son was born in 2018 and i was i hope i'm getting that right my, my son was born in 2017 and I was here, but I was here, but mentally I wasn't here, you know, so, but I was here though. I never left, but mentally I was just in another place because my son was born. It's my first child. But, um, I remember in 20, by 20, 2020 shit really changed. 20, 2020 was the biggest, was huge, humongous for my soul evolution. And that's why they did that thing. 2020, I really got a download in 2020, like, yo. It's your time, nigga. It's your time. And then 2022, no, 2021, I got the download that I got to move more into the occult realm, the metaphysical. I got to really hone in on that. And that's when I focused the channel on the occult and metaphysical. Because like I said, remember, in 2015, 16, 17, I focused a lot on pop culture and um, providing a metaphysical lens to pop culture. And I still do that from time to time with the pills and things like that. Professor Griff. I remember I had a show every week with Professor Griff. And those shows are, those are shows are easier. The These are metaphysical shows, it takes a lot of energy out. It takes a lot more energy to do these metaphysical shows. And um, this is why it's, um, it's rare to see somebody do this for so long. Because to be spiritually in this for so long is not an easy task at the rate I'm doing it. You know, several times a week, it, it takes a lot of energy. And it's just something you got to be born to do. This is just my mission. This is just my um, my purpose. So I'm thankful for that. But I'm thankful. Listen, I got to tell you. Listen, I got to tell y'all. I'm thankful for the honest conversation we had tonight about the eclipse, about different perspectives. Let me say this again. I am thankful for the honest conversation we had about different perspectives. Let's embrace different perspectives post-eclipse. I told you how I feel about reality and how there's no reality and how reality is your personal interpretation of an infinite sea of information that exists in the omniverse, the universe, the multiverse, an infinite sea of information. And we're personally interpreting that information and we're sharing it with people. And if they share it with us, then we have a culture. A culture is a group of people who share the same identity. Sometimes it becomes a cult and you feel like you have to follow that culture and you, you don't develop your own opinion on ideas. 
But listen, there's an infinity of information out there that we can embrace. And um, I just appreciate y'all for sharing so many different people that's doing different things for me. Nobody's arguing. Nobody's mad at each other. The sisters that called in, extremely mature about the conversation Dr. Phil Valentine had. We talk, we just really talking about this man woman dynamic that seems to be a big argument on the internet. I appreciate the maturity, such maturity tonight between myself. I know who I am. Y'all know who y'all are. I'm going to continue. I'm a leader all, all day, every day. I'm going to be that leader, whatever realm, time period, time split dimension I'm born in. And I appreciate the sisters that came and told me about the places in the universe where the, the sisters rule. And listen, man, we don't have to argue with this spiritual thing. If you confident, if you really, you only argue when you're not confident. See, people appear to be confident, but they arrogant. When you're really confident, you ain't got to argue with nobody about what they believe in. Because what you believe in is the shit to you. Well, I'm going to argue about you what you believe in. Only reason I'm arguing with you about what you believe in is because I'm not confident about what I believe in. And what you believe in makes me doubt what I believe in. I may disagree with you. Everybody has that right. But when I start to argue with you and really be angry at you, because I'm, I'm angry at you because you're making me not confident about what I believe in. Fuck, I'm going to argue with you about what you believe in for. If you believe in 10-foot green aliens, maybe you really seen that. There's things I've seen that I'm sure none of y'all seen, and there's things y'all seen that I have never seen. It's just the way it is, y'all. I'm not going to argue with y'all about what y'all believe in. I appreciate everybody's experience, and that's what makes Black Magic 363 Black Magic 363. I am the point guard of the gods. I'm going to pass y'all the ball as long as y'all come from an authentic, genuine place. I don't have to have that experience. But somebody out there is going to benefit from y'all experience, whoever comes on my platform. With that being said, make sure you um, donate to the Cash App. I'm going to take these last two calls real quick, and I'm going to feel good about myself. Like I said, today, listen, I tell you, yesterday I felt kind of anxious. To sum it up, this is the last thing I'm going to sum it up. Yesterday I felt kind of anxious. I learned from the eclipse. Don't stop. Stop trying to define everything. That feeling of me being anxious was me getting a supreme download. I'm gonna call it a supreme download. That supreme download required me to sit still and rest. That's why I did not upload a video yesterday. That's why I did not go live yesterday. I didn't upload a video with me and Cam. I decided to upload that today. I wanted to do a meditation song. I didn't do that. I decided to wait. Um, it's 80 percent done. I probably uploaded Thursday or Friday. But I just went out to see the eclipse. That's all I want to do. I just want to see it. I didn't want to talk to anybody on social media. I just personally want to ground. I grounded outside and I want to see the eclipse. And I did both. I was just disappointed because I thought it was going to be more of a eclipse. And it was like, we got like a 2% eclipse in Georgia. I thought I was going to get like a, I thought it was going to be 80%. I'm like, yeah, this shit going to turn dark. I can't wait. And that shit was like 3%. But uh, I did exactly what I wanted to do, and I felt a little anxious yesterday. Fast forward today. Today was like a perfect day. I'm not going to define yesterday as anxious. I tell you, I, it was the feeling, but it was really a supreme download that Brother Rich got. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling amazing and excellent. And uh, let's get to these last two calls real quick before we get out of here. We'll wrap this show up. Since today was perfect, we're going to end the show perfect. Since today was perfect, we're going to end the show perfect. All right? Who's this? Uh, Volante? Volant, Volant, Volant fan, and you there, brother? All right, I'm gonna move on, brother. All right, we got Jamal. Am I hey, Jamal, brother, Rich, Jamal. Now, Jamal, what's good, yes, brother? Sir. You are, you are the last call, brother. You the last call tonight, brother. What is on your mind? That's crazy, man. That's crazy. You know, um, you got the topic of the uh, of the eclipse, and yes. um. This spiritual, this spiritual journey I've been on, and you know, I'm just watching your show, watching uh, uh, Billy Carson. Um, yeah. It's kind of giving me kind of the vocabulary, kind of to, to, to speak it. I wouldn't have called it a spiritual journey, but what's been happening? I start with the eclipse. There was an eclipse at the end of 2017, and 
and, and I believe that was also around the time of the Lions Gate. Either it was one like late 2017 or early 2018. And what was happening in my life, um, you know, I raised my daughter, um, you know, since she was eight months on my own. And at this time she was 14 and her mother lived in Houston, Texas. That's where I'm at, I am now. We lived in Detroit and we found out she had breast cancer and it was terminal. So mm-hmm. we came to Houston in October you know, to visit and just, you know, it was coming time to leave. And I'm like, dang, so when we coming back to see her, like we probably, this is probably it. So I decided that we would move there let my daughter spend as much time with her mother as possible. So I fly back to Detroit and, you know, just get money in order to get things in order. Um, and I moved back here on, uh, on January 1st, 2018. Um, but it was like, that was like a, making that move and um because that was it was really big you know what i mean like my daughter her mother hadn't been in her life and you know it was just a big move just to do that it was just something my heart moved me to do and um and just making that big move through the lion's gate you know it it didn't it what i didn't miss that that thing that this was happening during the lion's gate i felt like i was coming out on the other end of something so 2018, um, on um, March 13th, her mom passed away. And, um, you know, I went in, you know, it's, it's a long, long, long story. But um, in 2013, I mean, in uh, 2018, March 13th, she passed away, 313. Um, I'm living in Houston now still, and I go to the DMV, and I'm, giving up my, I'm surrendering my Detroit, my Michigan driver's license. And I'm writing the number down to my Michigan driver's license on this piece of paper. They stamped it void, gave it back to me. And I'm writing the number down and I'm looking at the first six digits. I'm like, oh, that's my daughter's birthday. But with a numerology flip, you know what I'm saying? Her her birthday is uh, 12-12-2003. And the first digits was 12 0 three, six, six. So you got the 12, 12, 12, or the three, 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 right? And I continue writing and the rest, the last digits of the license number was zero, three, one, three, one, eight. Anybody in Michigan knows there's 12 digits in it, but those, the last six digits were the exact date that her mother passed away. And I'm like, wow, that's just something that, you know, I, I don't miss things like that, you know, and if I give you all the dates in this whole story and really go back in it, it's crazy. But as I go forward, it gets crazier. So I see that that coincidence. Um, And I'll fast forward to uh, last year, 2023. Um, My mother got sick. So she had a stroke uh, some years back and she wasn't doing well. So I ended up going back to Detroit and my job is a sales job. So. I missed some commission and things like that. She passed away. God bless my mother. Um, then when I got back, I went back home for the funeral and came back, got behind on some bills, ended up having to move from my house into an apartment. So I'm moving and now finally I've moved everything into my new apartment and my room is set up. Uh, everything set up, uh, the, the cables on. I'm like, man, I just turned the U-Haul in. I'm like, you know what? Um, my mom's birthday, now this was April 30th. My mom's birthday was April 29th. And I'm just like taking a big woo like I just a release. And I turned on the TV, Malcolm X was on. I'm like, I'm just gonna watch Malcolm X. And there was a scene in Malcolm X where uh, he, he was, going to commit himself to Islam. He was saying, I won't drink. I won't smoke. I won't, I won't fornicate. I won't, you know, he just was basically ready to live a righteous life. And, uh, the guy that was um, instructing him was like, okay, well now we, we pray five times to the East and Malcolm X wouldn't get on his knees and pray. I seen Malcolm X a million times and I always thought he was too humble. I mean, he couldn't humble himself. He maybe thought he was too big to do it. But at this time, I'm like, dang, this brother went to went from being a criminal, went to jail, got some 
learn some science, you know what I'm saying? Learn some 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 information and wants to be righteous. But at this point, he don't believe in God. That's why he didn't do it. He didn't believe in God. I'm just thinking like that's that took some integrity on his part because most people you find a group that you want to join or you know some people that's doing something, you might just go ahead and bend the knee and pray and you ain't you don't really believe. So at that point, I'm like, dang, well, I know I believe. But that's just that just took some integrity. So later in the scene, he goes back to his cell. He doesn't get on his knees and pray. And then he um, and then he gets a letter from Elijah Muhammad. And he says that he could see Elijah Muhammad in the room with him as he's reading the letter, said he could see the pain and wisdom in his face. And he said, then I could do it. Then he got on his knees and prayed. And I'm like, wow, I missed that all these years that at that point. He saw something and he saw something that made him believe like, no, this is real. God is real. There's something more to this. Regardless, I see a man in my room. I'm reading a letter and I see him in my in my jail cell like that. I, I kind of missed that whole point. I go outside later. I got a cigarette in one hand. I got a blunt in the other hand. And I'm on my new patio, just moving to my apartment. I'm like, man, maybe I should quit smoking. And um, I. I said, well, definitely the cigarettes. I'm like, but the weed, God, the weed though, you know, like I, I've been smoking for a long time and it's, you smoke and you get a, it gives you a wider perspective of things. You dig deeper into the information. And then when you come back, when you're sober, everything is still true. It's not like you hallucinated, imagined anything, you know what I mean? And I was like, it's just been keeping my perspective wide. And then the answer came to me, it said, sharpen up. And I saw like a vision or a lot of vision. I basically, I imagined a triangle, wide at the bottom, sharp at the tip. Like you've been smoking for years, time to sharpen up. And then a bird flew over my head. And a little, little small brown pipe sparrow or something just flew right in front of me. I'm like, okay, that's confirmation, God. And I look to the left, another one. Whoa, there you go. Look to the right. Another one. It happened about three, four times. And I'll, I'll hit to draw to drag this out, Brother Rich. I said, you know what? It's getting weird after about the fifth time. I said, I'm gonna look straight up. And I expected if I'm gonna see a bird, I know something. I should have confirmation a long time ago. But this is the mindset I was in. This is the thoughts that was happening. So I look up and I don't see nothing. And I look further out. I saw these two dots way in the sky and they just coming this way. Now I'm out here in Houston. I see there's hawks. There's all kinds of birds that fly real high in the sky, eagles, vultures, and they just coming. There's two of them. And as they get almost like overhead, I'm like, them dudes ain't even, they ain't flapped their wings yet. And when they got overhead, which I saw two UFOs. <laughs> Man, it looked like a it looked like a math equation flying. It was uh a, it was two of them. There was a blue circle. It was so high in the sky. It looked like a sign that you were supposed to see from the ground. Like intentionally, you're supposed to recognize this if you read whatever language. It's like a sign. It reminded me of the advertisement. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like it looked specific that you're supposed to see this from underneath. It the it was an oval shape in the middle, and then on, on each tip, it was a black less than or greater than sign. It was like a let, it was two black triangle tips, two of them. I whip out my phone. Try, try to sum it up, too, brother, because I don't have that much longer. So yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> to, but to, to sum it up, the events that led me to be on that patio, I ain't even, haven't even laid them all out, but. I wasn't moving to Houston, Texas. I was coming here, you know, because of my daughter's mom. I wasn't intending to move in this apartment. My mother passed away. I ended up getting put out of my other place. You know what I mean? I didn't intend to look at the sky that day. I was out there just having a smoke and, and thinking about the movie I just watched. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, but... I wasn't even, I mean, I've been mean, I've been wanting to talk to you. You see me in the chat probably, we, I've asked a question about the ID number and that specific, this was before the UFOs. I asked you this 
in the chat probably a couple of years ago and mm -hmm. probably another time recently. Um, but there's been, and, and I want to, I want to really, uh, connect with you on another, you know, maybe personally to show you, I got proof of certain things. I got evidence of certain things. I don't want to waste anybody's time with, you know what I'm saying? But I do want to really, I understand. I'm, I'm not, I'm not even telling the story, bro. I'm really putting this in a micro minute, even though I, I know I've kept you a minute, but it, it ain't been a micro minute. You've been on here for a while, brother. It ain't it ain't been no minute, brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, yeah, down, I know I've been I know I've been in here for a minute. Yeah, God but damn, you know, brother, you talking, so don't say a micro minute. Listen, I appreciate well, no, it. Yes, sir. I you calling in, brother. We can't I I, I gotta go. Uh, but listen, I appreciate you. I want you just to sum up basically what you got to say, because I got to leave. But brother, sum up what you're trying to say. And I would love for you to call in on the next call and show as well and finish this up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So um, what I'm observing from seeing that the, these events in my life that I wouldn't have chosen, this path I didn't choose, yeah. um, if, except for who I am in my DNA to make the choices I made. But these events I had no control over. Mm. You know, and for them to lead me to see what I saw made me go back and say, wow, well, I wouldn't have saw that if I didn't do this. If I didn't watch that movie, I wouldn't even have, I would have missed it. Oh, if if I wouldn't have moved here, I wouldn't have saw it. So it is making me see a deliberate uh, line of events. And I wonder if other people had those same kind of experiences. But it's also showing me a higher dimensional view of a view. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody, anybody who had the power to line these things up to happen, yeah, I can almost see their view, but only from here. I can't see from there. Mm -hmm. We got to talk some more, man. Even the symbol is representative of the zero, less than, greater than. Yeah, it's a it's a long range, but I I, I really want to talk to you some more about it. Hey, listen, brother, I appreciate your call, brother. Is there any contact information? You want to share with the people for anybody who might want to reach out to you and, sh and share or listen to your story? Yeah. Sure, sure. Um, you can email me. Uh, it's jam on it love, J A M O N I T L O V E at gmail.com. Jam on it love at gmail.com. You can reach out to this brother. And um, I appreciate you for calling in, my brother. Right? You take care of yourself. Yes, sir. And one more thing. If you look up Jamel Idris, like it's spelled on the screen, yeah. uh, put some of the information on YouTube. Um, you can see just some of these things have been mounting up up to a, a second and third uh, UFO. One of my caught on video. So that video, if you look on the YouTube page, you look up Jamel Idris, you probably find it. All right. All right. All right. Take care, my brother. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks, man. Peace. Peace. Peace, my brother. I shout out to everybody who called in tonight. Yeah, that, that brother got a long story that I feel as though is a show within itself. You know, that damn, that brother should definitely reach out to Roderick. Somebody said that in the chat. Roderick Martin could definitely give that brother some information about the story that he told. I see the brother sitting in the back. The brother Roderick Martin is somebody you should definitely reach out to as well. Shout out to Roderick Martin. I got to contact that brother and get him on the show again. You know what I'm saying? But shout out to everybody. Uh, we've been on two hours and 45 minutes. 11.47, man. The day after the eclipse. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Gratitude for everybody. I don't know how many of y'all been here from the very beginning, man. Shit. We done been on here. This, this is the eclipse type show. This is the this eclipse energy. You know what I'm saying? But I feel as though it's an amazing show. Authentic. Authentic show. You know, I usually use the word electrifying to describe my shows. This was electrifying, but I feel as though it was authentic tonight. I like that authenticity. You know what I'm saying? I love it. I love that authenticity. You know I'm saying I love that. You know, I'm not, we, we shouldn't be up here just trying to impress people. We should really say some shit that's on our mind and on our consciousness while we up here. You know what I'm saying? C Diggs, shout out to C Diggs. C Diggs is a regular. Um, all right, shout out C Diggs. Appreciate you for tuning in. Oh, man. Yeah, Brother Rich is definitely tired now. I got a show tomorrow, though. I'm going to be back tomorrow. Um, So tune in tomorrow at 9 o'clock. I won't say the show just yet, but I will be back tomorrow 9 o'clock sharp. All right? 
Uh, other than that, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Listen, family, we had some awesome, magnificent times. I want all y'all to continue to tap in, be the greatest version of yourselves, you know, do what you got to do. Uh, like Seven Beaumont says, you got forever to figure this out. You know what I'm saying? We got forever to figure this thing out. You know, this is just, uh, we just here for a short amount of time. We might come back. We might not. But we are greater than these vessels that we see, these vehicles that we see. We are way greater than that. And the whole purpose of this channel is to help you to tap into your expansive power that you are. Shout out to everybody who listened, gained something, supported, donated, watched, shared, everything. I appreciate all your help, all your support. I got a huge announcement coming for August real soon. Something real big. The biggest thing that I ever did is coming, is happening in August. I'm going to make an announcement real soon. Stay tuned for that. Besides that, y'all take care. Y'all have a good night. Y'all do your meditation, whatever y'all got to do tonight. And I'll see most of y'all tomorrow, right? Tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Y'all take care, all right? Peace, family.